The appetizer was a tasty morsel, something to get uh, their taste buds, their legs, their juices going. It was the prologue. This is stage one of the Absa Cape Epic in 2024, the 20th edition of the race that measures all. We're in Saronsburg, just outside Tilbach in the Western Cape, the Boerland of the Western Cape. And it is a spectacular morning for the first marathon stage of this year's race. As I said, the 20th edition is a gathering of some of the very best racers who have ever ridden a bike on this planet. And they are all getting stuck in today to this marathon stage of 88 kilometers that will take in many of these slopes of the beautiful Hood uh, Winterhook Mountains, the Biqua Mountains, and uh, not quite the Witzenberg just yet. The race village at Saronsburg, we are in this beautiful uh, farm for the fifth time. We first came here in 2011, then 2013, 16, and the Green Epic in 2021 was also uh, staged here. This is uh, what it looked like early this morning as riders, having uh, completed the prologue and transferred from Somerset West of Lawrenceford, made their way to this uh, marvelous campsite on, uh, on uh, Saronsburg Farm. It was all peace and quiet early in the morning as they prepared after their prologue yesterday. And uh, today will be a test like uh, very different to yesterday's short, sharp 26 kilometer blast around some of the most extraordinary trails I think we've ever seen in a prologue in the Absa Cape Epic. Alongside me, lovely to welcome once again, Neil Gardner, the guru, the stats guru of the Absa Cape Epic. Neil, morning. Well, thank you very much, Gerald, and it's great to be here and great to see another year. It's the 20th edition, an auspicious edition, and it is uh, characterized by certainly what we've seen in the field so far is a very densely populated general classification, all very close. I don't think we've ever seen such a close race, both in the men and the women, and uh, we're excited to see how this plays out. We had some amazing showings in the prologue, um, some very close showings, in fact, both in the men and the women, right up until the last climb of the day. We, uh, the three top contending teams were within just a few seconds of each other. So it's uh, all to play for today. Absolutely, yes. Uh, really, really fascinating uh, battle today as they take it on just one minute and 45 seconds between the top five. So how did that all happen? Well, here's a reflection on the racing uh, part of the prologue from uh, day one. The Absa Cape Epic is the most prestigious mountain bike stage race in the world and is commonly referred to as the Tour de France of mountain biking. This is the 20th edition of this eight-day full-service stage race traversing the spectacular Western Cape of South Africa. 2024 attracts the biggest ever elite field with national, world and Olympic champions riding in teams of two all striving for the unparalleled title of Absa Cape Epic winner. For the amateurs, just to complete the same 617 kilometer course with 16,500 meters of climbing is a huge accolade. It's day one today and the riders enjoy a short, sharp time trial prologue course that will count to their overall time. The prologue weaves around the Lawrenceford Wine Estate trails. It's short in length, but not on importance. The punchy course has steep climbs through the vineyards and technical manicured single track that requires every ounce of concentration. At just 26 kilometers with 700 meters of climbing, it'll take the top teams just over an hour. This 20th anniversary edition attracts many previous winners and many new combinations. The most decorated mountain biker of all time, Nino Schurter, is in attendance with new teammate Sebastian Finney riding for World Bicycle Relief. Schurter has multiple Olympic and world medals and has won the Cape Epic twice. Defending champion Matt Beers from South Africa also has a new partner, previous winner Howard Grotz from the USA riding for Toyota Specialized 91. Orbea Leert Speed Company with Georg Eger and Lucas Baum have remained the same since winning their first Absa Cape Epic in 2022 and always provide exciting racing. In the women's category, Vera Lossa is aiming to defend her title with new partner Alexis Skada for efficient Infinity SCB SRAM. Candace Lill from South Africa is hoping to break her four-time streak of second places with her new partner, current marathon champion Mona Mittervalner for Cannondale Factory Racing. 
Toyota Specialized 91 have always had a strong grip on the category, winning seven of the last nine events. This year, Sofia Gomez Viafan has a new partner in Samara Shepard. The Argentine Kiwi combination of Gomez Viafan and Shepard have a huge amount of motivation this year. Gomez Viafan won the Epic in 2022, but came third in last year's edition and is seeking revenge. The new combination works well together. Gomez Viafan taking the lead to start with and lets Shepard find her feet. It doesn't take long for the team to find a balance and they put together a great prologue, completing the course in just under one hour and 16 minutes. Cannondale Factory Racing, Mona Mittervalna and Candice Lill are the top two marathon riders in the world. They are favourites on paper, but the Cape Epic is always full of surprises. On the first steep climb of the prologue, Mittervalna starts to struggle with the heat. Lill adjusts the pace to help reduce the damage, but it's a bad sign for day one. In true professional style, they still post a solid time and take second place just six seconds ahead of third. Ghost Factory Racing is a new team for this 20th anniversary edition of the Absa Cape Epic. Both riders are newbies, but are very experienced on the world cross-country scene. Anne Terpster from the Netherlands was a 2021 silver medalist in the World Championships. She is joined by 26-year-old Nicole Kohler from Switzerland. The Ghost team find their legs after the 12-kilometer mark and keep extending their split times. They're in their element on the short course with steep climbs and technical descents. It's the first time at the Cape Epic for both the riders and they put on an incredible performance, finishing the Lawrenceford Prologue in 1 hour, 14 minutes and 45 seconds. 1 minute and 5 seconds ahead of Cannondale to take the win. The women's podium sees the legendary Toyota Specialized 91 in third. Second goes to humble team Cannondale Factory Racing and the win is taken by Ghost Factory Racing, who will wear the orange leader's jerseys for tomorrow's stage one. In the men's prologue, the time splits Buffett back and forth over the hot and dusty afternoon. Dutch marathon champion Hans Becking and European marathon champion Bart Allemann from Belgium are Team Buff Magamo. They have won previous stages of the Cape Epic and Becking has a podium finish in the general classification. Motivations are high. They are a great combination on the bikes, even though this prologue course is relatively short for them. The pair manage their power well and the trails of the Lonesford estate are kind to them. They take third place. Defending champion Matt Beers and 2018 champion Howard Groth stamped their mark with a very fast start to the prologue. Toyota Specialized 91 settled into the course, sharing the time at the front. It's a relief for them to get this first day out of the way and take a second place, completing the course in just under one hour and three and a half minutes. Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney from World Bicycle Relief are both cross-country specialists, so the short 26-kilometer course suits them down to the ground. The two friends created this partnership so they could ride together and spread the message of the bicycle charity. From the second split, the Swiss-Danish combo stretched their lead and crossed the line in one hour, two minutes and 38 seconds, 51 seconds ahead of second place. The prologue showed how unpredictable and competitive this untamed race is. The top 18 teams all finished within five minutes of each other. Buff Megamo in third, Toyota Specialized 91 in second, and a well-deserved win to World Bicycle Relief. Scherter and Finney are proud owners of the yellow leader's jersey for stage one tomorrow. The sensational days are racing around uh, a beautiful Lawrenceford wine estate for that prologue as uh, in uh, general uh, feeling is that that was uh, one of the most engaging, entertaining and thrilling uh, prologue uh, stages we've ever had at the Absa Cape Epic and it got things off to a sensational start and it set the tone for this race because as you can see from that uh, map, where are we going? There are a lot of those tightly uh, wound uh, the trails all the way around Stellenbosch, Wellington, and where we are today, Saronsburg. So it is a trail-laden Absa Cape Epic with the one big uh, transitional day from uh, Saronsburg to Wellington, which will come on stage number three. Today is uh, all around these beautiful trails of uh, Tilbach, and uh, it really is something uh, very, very special. The Tilbach Mountain Bike Club have been uh, going for some 12 years and have uh, consolidated their efforts to build some of the very best trails imaginable and they continue their work and have uh, created some new ones for the stage today. Neil uh, Gardner sitting alongside me today, 88 kilometers, 2,450 meters of climbing. Uh, traditionally, uh, stage one is always one of those really tough stages of the Absa Cape Epic.
Ever since I can remember, the stage one has always been an awakening. The prologue is a taster, and stage one is the real true test of the athletes. Stage one, uh, it's it's often often there's been some casualties. We've seen some um, some terrible days. In fact, even last year with the, the team of Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins, Christopher Blevins was experiencing cramps really early on, and they shipped huge amounts of time. In the end, it turned out pretty well for them, because as we all know, anything can happen in the Absa Cape Epic, and it very often does. They managed to reclaim that yellow jersey on the last day, and uh, it's really, it, it's just the stage one is that great leveler. It's yeah. that it's that stage that you that you realize, okay, this is this is the week, this it's is what's coming, and um, all the speed in the world that you have. It's now about managing yourselves, managing your equipment and managing your efforts and your nutrition and all of those things that really count uh, as we get later on into the race week. There's a bit of shock element about it. They'll head up uh, Raptor Rise, so, which is the early climb on the Ubiqua Mountain up here, and then Buchu, uh, the descent into Tiernes Kral, the, the water point at Reflections Guesthouse across the uh, beautiful thirsty uh, floating bridge. Uh, that comes at around halfway stage. And then they head up into the Winterhook side of the uh, mountain, which is where they'll come uh, to really the, the really business end of the stage because it is uh, backloaded with climbing. Yeah, backloaded indeed. And there's three big climbs after the halfway mark. There is a, let's not forget that that Raptor Rise is a tricky climb, the Buku Descent and the section in between Tennis Crawl. This is the, these are challenging sections, but the three spikes that you'd see in the profile, the shark's teeth, and finishing off at Fanti's Pass, one of the legendary climbs of the race. This will surely be a separator among the top teams. The top teams, they may want to make a move a little bit earlier, and of course, when the opportunity arises, the top teams will take them wherever they can, and we'll soon be seeing the riders out on the course. Clip Revere is the Toyota tough section, and uh, then uh, Janse Bos Bergplas, Fanti's uh, Pass, and then Asakai Bosch, and home. 88 kilometers, 2,450 meters of climbing. And what are the thoughts of our leading contenders on the start line ahead of today's stage? Well, Bart Brenchens, a former winner, world champion, and Olympic champion, was chatting to them. How, about, uh, first of all, how do you feel? How did you sleep? Uh, yeah, I slept pretty well. Uh, I think I'll, I'll take a nap this afternoon since we have a, a relaxed afternoon are you used to start this early in, in racing yeah now that i'm racing a bunch of gravel in the u.s you know six seven o'clock starts are pretty common but not for eight days in a row or seven days and uh, where is your teammate uh, matt where is he? yeah I, he'll show up he's probably out warming up uh, you are just stretching a little bit or did you do already a warm-up yeah i did some warm-up and now just i guess we're hanging out uh, waiting Yesterday was actually uh, incredible good what you did, second place, so uh, podium, uh, the, the strategy for today? Uh, yeah, I think we just have to kind of stay towards the front before the single track, and then after that, you know, it won't be easy, but it'll calm down a little bit. I mean, many teams this year, more mm -hmm. than 50, they're all yeah. fighting for a stage win, you know how it works, yeah. a lot of single track today as well. Yep. And what about the stage? It's it looks like a little bit more easy in the beginning and uh, a hard end. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, th I think at the start it'll still be hard because people really want to get into the single track and then everyone is going to be wanting to go as hard as they can on the last climb uh, and the ones before it. <laughs> what do you think about the uh, race time? Finish around? I was thinking four hours, but heck, I, it probably is faster. <laughs> we will see. Yeah. Good luck for today. Yep, thanks. What's your strategy? Yeah, I think uh, towards the end it gets quite uh, busy today. There are a lot of climbs, uh, so we actually don't know the track uh, well, but I think that's uh, everyone's problem. So everyone is racing kind of blind here. That's uh, maybe also one uh, cool thing about the Epic. So we will see uh, how it unfolds towards the end. I mean, the Epic has a lot of single track too. A lot of teams this year. It's a hard fight from the beginning, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely going to be a fight for positioning. I think, uh, uh, like across country, one or two hours in the beginning, and then it's going to be all sorted. And I think there's a like, you know, but you probably know the the intern ranking is going to be done by the by the first two hours, and and then all the teams are going to be chill. It will be very interesting. Any uh, doubt about uh, the heat? Is that a problem, or you are finished before the, the 
extreme heat starting? Yeah, that's a big question. Uh, I mean, we are calculating with heat and we are uh, like, uh, yeah, so we, we know that the heat could come, so yeah. I think it's for everyone the same. We did a bit of uh, heat training as good as we could in, uh, back in Germany, so I think we were well prepared. So. But what about finish time? That's before 11 o'clock. Good question. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we try to. Good luck today. Yeah. And how do you feel? Yeah, feeling is good after yesterday. Obviously, we're confident in our ability to, to throw down what. So, um, yeah, today is the first proper stage, so it's going to be a tough one. But a good start yesterday in the prologue. Uh, the numbers two and three in the, on the podium was very close, but you did a good job. Yeah, it, it was close. I think it gets closer every year, pretty much, as the teams all up their level. And um, yeah, the gaps are tight, but I think they will not be so tight after today. Have you seen this course? Did you did you uh, a recon on this on this uh, course today? Yeah, not so much, um, but we know a bit from 2021, Fanti's Pass, and if we know this valley quite well. well I know this valley well, and um, it's a hard stage. The last climb is going to be decisive for, for the win, I think. Um, it's going to be very selective up there, so yeah, I think that's where the gaps are going to, maybe even before. Good luck for today. Thank you. Yeah, I feel quite good this morning. Had a good sleep. Uh, we had a really good race yesterday in the yellow now, so uh, let's see what the day will uh, bring. It's a bit fresh this morning, Nino. Uh, did you have a good sleep? I also had a good sleep. Yeah, it's a beautiful early. It's nice to wake up to such a beautiful scene. So, yeah, but it's fresh, yeah, the morning, but it will be hot later. <laughs> <laughs> they expect uh, 38 degrees uh, this afternoon, but probably your finish will be uh, before 11, before the, the heat starts. Actually, do you sleep in the in the mobile home parking too? No, uh, this year we decided we're staying in, in houses. So we have a beautiful house just uh, where the course actually passes. So uh, yeah, this year we decided for this. It's a bit, then we need to go back and forth. But yeah, like the past years, I had a bit enough of the camping. So <laughs> I get too old for the camping. <laughs> you, never got the, you never got too old. <laughs> Do you know anything about uh, the course from today? Yeah, it's, uh, it starts, I think, uh, a bit uh, mellow, but then uh, we have some sharp climbs, um, especially the last one that uh, uh, Monty, Monty Pass, or something, Fonty's Pass. Uh, it's a steep one. I think we did this in a previous epic, as I remember, and uh, that's for sure something that suits us and uh, some good trails, so I'm looking forward to it, yeah. This year the, the peloton is about uh, more than 50 teams, uh, 100 riders, a lot of single track too. Is it a cross country race, a cross country fight from the beginning? Oh, I think today we start on some big roads, it looks a bit flatter. Uh, so hopefully we can just stay in the bunch and then when we go on to the single trail, try to uh, stick a little bit more to the front and see what the other guys are doing. That's uh, what the, we try. What I remember from uh, Cape Epic is always the sunrise and with the dust. Are you prepared for that? It's sometimes very dangerous. Yeah, that's uh, something can be really dangerous, especially yeah, when the, the sun comes up, it's slow. Uh, you need to be careful uh, in those moments. Also, like going next to the vineyard. Sometimes you have like some some uh, some things coming out there, and like it's uh, you need to be careful. And hopefully, everything goes well and nobody got hurt and uh, we get through without any crashes. Good luck for today and uh, have a look to each other too. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> Morning, Mona, how do you feel? Uh, yeah, well, a bit better um, than yesterday. The, the heat stroke was not too easy to recover from, to be honest. Um, yeah, I did my best, but it was, as I said, it was uh, quite a rough way. Um, just hoping that today the energy comes back during the race, but yeah, right now still feeling a bit flat. Today it's much longer much harder first stage actually now it's nice and cool but they expect the very uh, heat conditions during the day yeah i mean now it's nice and cool as you said but it's going to be hot pretty soon and especially when once we're hitting the big climbs it will be hot i mean now it's just riding around but once it's getting serious racing it will be proper hot um, I mean, normally I never struggled with the heat, so yesterday was the first day um, where I had my like problems. So I would just take the side of confidence from the past and forget yesterday and 
I think it's just be staying relaxed. And uh, I mean, yesterday was one hour sprint, and now we have 35 hours of marathon racing, so it will be a different week from now on. I think a different story today. Candice, do you know the trails? Do you know the area? Is it, is it, does it, is it more easy in the beginning and more hard at the end? Yeah, I mean, I think even from just looking at the profile, you can see that the racing will really happen in the second half. And yeah, having raced here in previous years and also no silver, just from general riding, um, I can tell that that's what's going to be, that's what's going to happen. You have to go to the start. The thoughts of our elite races, and this was from early this morning, as uh, Bart uh, alluded to there. It is a very early start for a lot of these European pros. It is a little earlier than they uh, get up, let alone start racing. So here they are, charging away at an incredible speed, and that has been a, an evolving factor of uh, the ABSA Cape Epic over the years. I was standing alongside a former top tenor and a man who's uh, performed at the very highest level here over the years, Ben Maltzwanapur, and he just said, you know, in our early years, in the early uh, 2000s and even into the 10th year, that nothing like this. The crash right there at the start, very, very early on. Dust and uh, riders getting uh, caught behind the crash. Well, this is not something you want to see this early on, but just perhaps a bit of a lapse of concentration it's uh, all eyes are on the field to see if there's anyone that's staying crashed. That's the most important thing is that a crash is a crash, but uh, we just really hope that none of the riders are staying down. No, it looks like everyone was up and uh, we had a good look this morning at who went down. And it seemed like it was Howard Grotz falling with one of his, uh, one of his backup teammates, but uh, all back in the mix and on the charge. Earlier on, uh, it was as to be as predicted. It was the Orbia Liet Speed Company guys, aggressive at the front. They know exactly what to do, and they know where to do it. I think we're going to say that quite quite often this week. Uh, that uh, uh, Lucas Baum and uh, Gao Gao are going to be aggressive. Now, this uh, just a couple of minutes later was the uh, UCI women's batch heading off a very competitive batch. This led by the Ghost Factory Racing team of uh, Turfster and Cola, who took that. Uh, Vita orange jersey in the uh, Aramex women's category yesterday ahead of uh, the Canada factory racing team Lillian Mittevalda as you heard uh, at the start there Amona Mittevalda not perhaps um, feeling as uh, chipper as uh, she would have liked to after taking uh, uh, a bit of heat yesterday and uh, hopefully she's recovered from that and uh, the earlier start today they'll spend less of the time in the heat of the day today so it might just be a little better for her Samara Shepard the Oceana marathon champion She's a partner of a Sofia Gomez Via Fund, sixth of the World Marathon Championships last year. And then the one by Mona Mitchell and uh, second is Candace Lil there. So she's uh, in her first voyage on the Absa Cape Epic alongside someone who's won it before. A very solid combination. Back for the men and uh, again, the, the talk about the, the angle of the sun, the rising sun and the, sh the uh, dust can create all manner of difficulties for these riders in terms of just picking up uh, obstacles in the road and the shadows uh, might uh, block uh, holes in the road or as uh, Nino Schurter was suggesting, wires holding pillars up in the vineyards. But all safely through there and uh, uh, cracking speed already uh, has uh, broken uh, the elastic to a, a group behind here uh, under the whip of uh, Gail Geiger and Lucas Baum. Bart Alleman, uh, the European champion in there, Hans Becking in the Dutch champion's colors, and there come the yellow jerseys of the Schurter and uh, Ms. Bartofini. Oh, we want to do a bit of a roll call in this group, with the, especially with the aggression of the Obia Liet team, and we'll give some uh, indication of where everyone is at the time checks. I'll give you those updates in a moment because there is action down on the field but uh, action to come for the uh, amateur races and they have a long day ahead of them some of them will be riding way into the note this is quite an early batch start so these are yep. the riders that were ranked highly after a great performance in the prologue and is what part of what the prologue does at the absolute gate because it allows the riders to get a good start batch time. It's a cruel sport this. They start, the, the, the slowest riders start an hour and a half after the fastest riders and will cop the worst of the weather, the heat, the, the, the heat of the day, and have the longest day. But that's what makes these riders such legends. Here, yeah, this is a real problem for the Mbuko team. 
And uh, that, well, it may not have cost them too much time. Marco Van Vesselboer had a, an astounding prologue yesterday. Finished fourth overall. They lead the African jersey category. But that early on puts them on the back foot. Well, it does certainly. But they look like they were uh, handling it pretty well. And of course, let's not forget, they do have a backup team. All important backup team for this uh, team that are looking to not just take that red jersey, but perhaps Africa jersey. They actually have their sights on the yellow jersey. As we saw in the prologue, they were leading at the split times, which we haven't seen for a while. And uh, really a superb performance. They were within 10 seconds of the very best in the world. So they clearly have the firepower, and now they've got to, they've got to put it to practice. I think what we're seeing there is how Bar uh, Edgar and Baum have put the hammer down, and th they're already a uh, team scrabbling to, to try and, oh, another little coming together. Who went down there on the right-hand side as we go back to the uh, women? Mitevalna. Well, she's going to have to manage her efforts, and the key to this is going to be how Candace Lil handles this. How is she feeling? If she's feeling strong, she's got to be very mindful of, of the condition of her partner. Well, luckily, the, the early morning pace was a little bit, uh, little bit less fierce than in the men's category. They'll be looking to the, uh, to the four big obstacles of the day. The rat to rise and the climb up to the Toyota Tough section. Janssen Bos, Fantis Pass and the descent into Sarensburg. And that's what they're looking forward to today. And let's just see uh, when the pace really does set off because that is quite a large group of women contenders. One minute and five seconds, the gap between the Ghost Factory Racing Team, uh, Terpstra and Kohler, and uh, Lil and Mittevalna of Canada. And then just uh, further six seconds back, Gomez Vierfan and uh, Shepard. It's, it's, it's a fairly big gap back to the defending champion, Vera Lossa and Alexis Skada. Three minutes and ten off the leaders. And in uh, fifth place, where e fought uh, private client holdings, uh, Hayley Preen and uh, uh, Liana Gerald. So that's the top five in the women. What a spectacular morning uh, here in this uh, bowl. Again, rather like the Helderberg Bowl, with the, uh, surrounded by mountains on three of the four sides here, with the Breda River that runs through this uh, beautiful valley, Tilbach through to Woolsley and all the way down Worcester and eventually out uh, to Swellendam and uh, to the uh, Indian Ocean. That's a long, long way away. But this is uh, the women's group just uh, heading away from Saronsburg. Uh, all together and uh, calm and composed. The fierce uh, attacking from the men's race, absent at the moment in the women's race, mindful of the uh, efforts they've got to put in today. Well, I think mindful of the heat as well. The weather forecast predicts temperatures of up to 35 degrees. It was a bit chilly this morning. We saw Matt Beers wearing his uh, long sleeve shirt. And that is uh, the, one of the things that you just have to get used to when you are a newbie to the Absa Cape Epic are the extreme temperatures. Sometimes the temperatures can uh, be in single digits early in the morning and by the afternoon you're uh, jumping into an ice bath willingly. Yeah, the, the temperatures rocketed yesterday and I think uh, the, the stillness of the air uh, in the valleys yesterday was what... Uh, really hurt the, the riders uh, there's no air it was very very it's like an oven and we've experienced that before in that uh, part of the world um, so they uh, not that, that they get used to it but it's uh, just very very difficult to deal with beautiful trails uh, today it is as i said a, a day that they will uh, get to enjoy the wonderful trails of the tulbach area the community the mountain bike community uh, in, uh, amazing in accommodating the needs and the desires of mountain bikers by uh, using these beautiful slopes and uh, natural terrain to create a, a playground for mountain bikers this year used and enjoyed by the Absa Cape Epic for the fifth time. So still with our women's team and the uh, orange jerseys there and Terpstra and uh, Nicole Kohler in their first uh, Absa Cape Epic. Well, they might think this is uh, this is quite quite easy. This we've got our, our, our leaders jerseys on the first time we've ridden it. Well, let's see. It's a long day to That's go. It's a long week to go. <laughs> Yesterday's effort, certainly, I mean, these are highly pedigreed riders on the, the very top end of the sport at the uh, UCI World Cup, uh, on the World Cup scene. They absolutely have the firepower. Yesterday suited their efforts because it was an hour. And uh, today it might, be, it might be a little bit out of their comfort zone, but these are very experienced campaigners. They've ridden stage races before. They've ridden in South Africa before. And the uh, pairing, the Ghost Factory Racing pairing is... Uh, well and truly the favorite team right now. 
That is, a, I think, the shot of uh, Danielle straight on and Steph Walters, the Africa jersey leaders in the women's race there. It looked like Danielle just giving Steph a little push. Maybe she's not feeling too chipper uh, after yesterday. And that's another factor that uh, we've got to uh, be cognizant and the riders have to be aware of is that, uh, you know, not everyone's going to uh, arrive the next morning feeling uh, uh, bulletproof and strong uh, you've got to be uh, very very careful about uh, how you manage your your efforts throughout this this race and of course that's where teamwork and partnerships come into play uh, and uh, it's how you uh, work as a team not as an individual to bring you success now that uh, leading pair of Terpstra and uh, Kola go to the front of the race and uh, they're on to the early climbs I think heading towards a raptor rise it didn't look like they were about to attack, perhaps just wanting to get to the front so they could take charge of the pace, be the ones that set the pace. And uh, just another aspect of being in the front is that you can stay out of trouble. The draft effect that you see in the roads in road cycling isn't as, uh, isn't as important, especially on these steep, tricky climbs. So the uh, position to take, if you, are in the, uh, if you are able to, is right at the front and uh, set, set your own pace and stay out of trouble. Yeah, staying out of trouble is key. Look at these beautiful uh, trails through the Feinbos here. Absolutely spectacular. And uh, driving a lot of these. Taking a foot off the uh, pedal just to get around that uh, tricky corner. So it is a, a seriously challenging day as we have a, another look at the women's start. Ronsberg in the uh, background there. As we have a look at today's uh, profile, so Raptor Rise is the early climb up uh, the side of that uh, Obiqua range on the far side down. Buffy, Tina's car, lots of lovely single tracks through that wine estate. The thirsty uh, water point, first water point at 44 k's along that floating bridge. Then the work begins. And we've said it before. we said it again, a back-loaded stage. All to play for on those three final climbs, those spiky bits at the end, and Clip River, and of course the Funties Pass at the end. A bit of information on Funties Pass later to come. Yeah, that uh, Toyota tough section yesterday on the prologue had uh, tongues wagging and uh, knees shaking. It really was a very, very technical ride. For every rider was talking about it this morning even. Um, and uh, to be fair, it might be one of the tougher tough Toyota tough sections they'll come across all week. Back with our men's leading group right now. They're the yellow jerseys of Schurter and Feeney. And uh, they are uh, on the climb. I would suggest that they are heading up towards that Toyota tough section now on this beautiful zigzag climb up uh, Clip Refeed. And uh, it's a long, long climb. In fact, this whole section, Klipperfi, then they descend down the uh, tough section, which is the Klipperfi descent. Yansa Boss, uh, the, they go up the other side and down. There's around 17 kilometers of uh, trail. And uh, close on 700 meters of climbing in that little b block of riding, say between 48 kilometers and around about... Uh, 69, 68, and then they begin the climb to Fonti's Pass. That is how tough this uh, this race is today. It really is going to uh, hurt those who go out too hard, and that's the key. Manage your efforts. We've seen, having said that, we've seen uh, Gag and Lucas Baum of the uh, Aubert Lead Speed Company team go out as they always do, flat out hard. But they seem to have the motors and the engines to uh, s sustain that. And they certainly can sustain it, but uh, sometimes it's it can be and a move really early on to sustain that effort and sometimes it can just be a bit of a tactical move because of course any kind of effort uh, in the beginning means that the others have to respond and if there's a bit of a gap it means that the others are on the back foot so it may not be a move to necessarily stay away it may just be uh, it may just be an aggressive move to to force a mistake because we saw the likes of Christoph Sauer, a well-known tactician in the race but his one of his famous tactics was to attack on the climbs really early on, and that would force the other riders to catch up on the downhill, uh, where that left Christoph Sauser and his partner, Barry Stunder, to just take it easy on the downhill, and the others were to force the pace, which could force a mistake. And of course, a mistake can lead to a mechanical, and the time loss of that could be more or less infinite. So it could be a tactical move by George Egger and Lucas Baum 
or it could just be wanting to push the pace and just get going because he knows, well, they both know, if they can form a group and get some cooperation going, it means that the others are immediately on the back foot really early into the stage and really early into the race. And it is a long week. We have heard from the riders that uh, for the women's section, for the women's category, it's around about a 36-hour week for the men's 26-hour week. Around about uh, that's about more or less the times that they'll be taking for uh, the accumulated time throughout the week. And this early in the race, really, it's hour hour three we're talking about. Yep, two. Yep, we're in the third hour yes. of the race. Just yeah, currently. So we're not even 10 or just over 10 percent into the uh, into race week. This is the uh, Toyota Tough section. This is heading down uh, Clip Refi, the trail that uh, is highlighted as the Toyota Tough section. And uh, they're charging down here. Uh, interesting in this group are the Pike Eurosteel pair of uh, Philip Bass and uh, his partner Peter Dutoy. And uh, they will be uh, looking to make up time on uh, the Imbuco pair. There it goes. Oh, yeah, there's the Pike Eurosteel. Then it's uh, Schurter and Finney Becking and uh, his partner, Vart Alemann. Then it's uh, one of the Bulls pairs. He and Lewis Huber, Simon Schnell and Lewis Huber are in that group. There is Marco Hubert, and uh, they're all in here. There is Lewis Huber going to the So the, uh, both the top African teams in there, Mbuko and Paga Eurostil are in there in this league group for time being. Well, that's a great uh, roll call we see there. They're, we saw at the 44 kilometer mark at that time check at the, uh, at the water point, uh, Orbia, Lead Speed Company, World Bicycle Relief, Pago Eurosteel, Buff Megamo, and the Bulls Mavericks, that's Schneller and Huber. They were in the group. The five teams, top five teams, had a 30-second gap over Honeycomb Pro Cycling, Willio Pretoria Factory, Willio Torpado, Toyota Specialized 91, Matt Beers and Howard Grotz, and Mbuko were just a little bit off, but uh, now they seem to have caught up, and it's the top 10 teams are all in contention. Yeah, we, just uh, you mentioned the Toyota Specialized 91 team and uh, just heading in before they got into that uh, Toyota Tough section, Matt Beers was looking to put in a little bit of surge. There was a bit of a gap between them there. And uh, so that's uh, a bit of a uh, slight concern for the Toyota Specialized pair. Uh, they will uh, not want to lose any more time than absolutely necessary. Well, just also, if we're talking about concern, the riders, the teams that should be concerned are the likes of... Canyon CD, Andreas Seewald, Mark Stutzman, we weren't exactly sure what went on, but they are two minutes off the pace, or well, they certainly were two minutes off the pace. They are luckily riding with their backup team, Stozek and Vakot, and they will be in, they will be looking to close that gap as soon as possible. Also, casualties of the, uh, of that uh, early surge were the likes of uh, the Torpado Kenda factory team, Diego Rosa, Casey South, they had a really good showing at the prologue. And Simon Stipjan, Jakob Hartmann, also two minutes off the pace. Well, that uh, gives you an idea where they are. Thomas Dietsch, Stefan Sam, Stefan with the leaders, I think they're coming off the uh, Clip Repeat Trail. And uh, the Clip Repeat Trail is the Toyota Tough section. Now back with uh, our women's uh, group with our Bulls Media e-bike. Jesse Nixon is with us. The first time Jesse's joining us here. A highly accomplished uh, downhill racer. Comes uh, from a family steeped in uh, trail and downhill racing. And uh, Jesse joining us for the first time. Wonderful to have her as uh, our media third media e-bike uh, on the Bulls bikes. Last year we had Isla Stowe doing the job for a couple of years, in fact. But Isla's now doing the real thing. She's uh, racing the Apsi Cape Epic this year, so it's uh, fantastic showing that they put their legs uh, where they should be on the uh, race itself. Fantastic to see. This, uh, trail. It's just, uh, as if we've been saying, so many uh, trails here built by the Tilbach Mountain Bike Club. Dion Wilkins, uh, a big driving force here and a big trail builder. He's a farmer in this area. Grant Clack also heavily involved in the Tilbach Mountain Bike Club. And uh, all the local community here. Tim, in fact, Dion's son, Tim Wilkins, does uh, a lot of the building. Um, quite often, uh, Dion gets the credit for the, the trails. And Tim says, hang on, I've been building these trails, and he's done a great job. Dion, in fact, is riding this year's Zapsa Cape Epic. So there is the, uh, the split after 45 k's. The Ghost Factory Racing Team are second ahead, but uh, those top uh, five teams all together. Efficient Infinity SC, Vera Lossa, and Alexis Skada. Who's lost time here? Capital, though. 
a long way down uh, the uh, check riders. Give an idea of the dusty nature of these trails. Uh, and this is typical of the Absa Cape Epic terrain. And in these parts, it will be dusty, dry, and uh, well, certainly got rocky yesterday, and they'll get a bit of it today as well. And indeed, tomorrow into the Bitsenberg Valley on the other side of those mountains. Beautiful uh, scenes and visuals from uh, on the bike here. Yeah, puts you right in the race, doesn't it? It uh, is fantastic. An innovation that uh, we first um, used to back here in, uh, I remember getting visuals uh, from uh, the media e-bikes uh, very excitedly coming down the Witzenberg uh, drop back into Tilbach back in uh, 2013. So it's fantastic to see. flowing trails, but uh, it doesn't uh, give you a real perspective of the uh, climbs and the punishing nature of today's journey around this beautiful uh, Tilbach Valley. Well, it's, uh, we are just so privileged to uh, welcome uh, our fellow commentators. We've heard uh, Bart Brenches on the start line interviewing uh, the riders before the start, but uh, alongside us uh, for today's stage and indeed for the rest of the weekend was yesterday Sabine Spitz, uh, a former Olympic champion, gold, silver and bronze medal. Yeah, hey. um, yeah. I, I mean it's... Uh, does that, does my, that feel like another life to you, life, lifetime ago? It's, uh, it's a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but um, look, it, it's, I mean, of course, like uh, the Olympics, it's, uh, it's something special. Um, and uh, I have, in a way, also the privilege to be part of the Olympic Games five times, so, which is actually quite great in a long time. Um, but it's also, I mean, it's also nice in a way now in seeing actually the sport a bit from the different side. And but still be connected to the yes, sport, yes. which I really enjoy. And you still ride your bike? I do. Yeah, I was already also this morning. I was a bit out. Had tried to to figure out a little bit uh, about the course, and it's like you what you also said earlier. I mean, um, so the the riders we went out and we went actually against the sun, and then there was like this dust, and it was like you couldn't really see the underground, and um, so yeah. Crashes happens quite easily under these conditions. Yeah, we saw one very early on in the men's race as they left the start, uh, a crash that fortunately didn't take uh, any uh, casualties with it. But this is the lead bunch in the women's race, in the Aramex women's race with the Ghost Factory Racing team on the front there. Also there are the uh, specialized team, the Cannondale Factory Racing team, the private client uh, holdings team. Uh, Mona Mittervalde uh, at the very back of that uh, that, that group there. Uh, she she uh, in her interview at the start of the day said she wasn't feeling uh, quite yet uh, you know that that strong. But uh, how, how do you approach a day like that? Um, to me, uh, she looked a bit uh, um, uncertain yesterday when I saw her on the podium or in the finish. Um, and I guess it's just also because she yeah was also a bit baffled with how she felt on the bike in, the, in this still shorter um, um, uh, prologue race and um, yeah maybe also just uh, tries now take today a bit easier of course yesterday she probably would have like tried everything with cooling down and uh, uh, keep her body temperature cold and maybe also like for today um, some extra or being extra cautious with at the water points, trying to to cool down, to take a, a cup of water into the neck, or just yeah, I, I think it's, but also for all riders, it's yes, yes. If in in these hot conditions, you you need to cool down your body. So it's uh, Ghost Factory Racing, then the uh, specialized uh, team, and then it's uh, you can see uh, Candice Lill in there, and the private clients uh, team E for private clients in there as well. So the top four teams doing very nicely indeed at the moment, just managing the pace, but you talked about uh, taking it easy. Well, not taking it easy, but managing efforts, but the other teams will be aware and will they'll be, 
feeling good and going hard. So you've got to be very careful, in, and Candice Lill's got to be very careful in how she approaches this. If the race goes away and her partner's feeling, feeling weak, you've got to manage that. Yeah, so one, one thing what you can do is, uh, as, a, as a bit stronger team partner, if you go into if you go if, if the if the um, uh, if the the trail goes into a single trail, so that you just try and where you you go on into the front and you try to slow down the pace, to make it also a bit easier for your partner to to follow and to 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 stay with the group. Tactics uh, will come into play. Well, just looking at those tactics there, we saw the team in the lead. They looked like they were pushing the pace a little bit. It will be as we go up in the air again, looking down over these uh, farmlands. Lush they are. Now, live footage from uh, the men's race. And uh, oh, talking of pushing it, the pace there. Talking about pushing the pace. L Lucas Baum is, yeah. Yeah, is here in the lead and really uh, always with a, with, a, yeah, with a good pedal stroke. And you see that the others are we're trying to clinch on and to hang on. Oh, we can see there is a very select group there. The uh, group of Buff Megamo are in touch. It's Orbia Liet Speed Company pushing the pace. Yellow jerseys are very much in the mix. Buko in the mix. And the Beking and Alaman pairing also in touch. But casualties down the trail. It looks like it might be the singer pair who are trailing a little bit uh, off the back of that uh, lead batch, a very exclusive batch indeed. Uh, the uh, Red, white, and blue is Hans Becking, the Dutch champion. And alongside him is Wout Alleman. Look how steep this climb is. Very, very steep indeed. And uh, line choice key here. Nino Schurter not leaving Lucas Baum's back wheel. Wout Alleman just keeping himself in the uh, frame there. He's the European champion. One hand on the handlebar here, trying to eat as he goes up the climb. Yeah, it's not always easy when uh, uh, to, to still also grab something else out of your pocket and uh, and then, yeah, especially uh, um, in the climb to push something in your mouth and chew on it. Yeah. Trying to work out, we've got uh, the, the, the Buff Mega Bow, we've got uh, World Bicycle Relief, we've got Obea Lead Speed Company, there is a Specialized 91, I think, just hanging on here. And uh, Paige Eurostil, their early uh, pace has dropped off a fraction. Willy Vittoria Factory, that's Rabenstein and Poro, 12 seconds down. And then uh, Marco Joubert and uh, his partner, Vessel Buerta, 14 seconds off the pace. There's a, the, the race within the race. is Paige Eurostil and Mbuko racing for the Africa jersey. But I think they also want to be the best performing African team in the, in the Amscape Epic, which obviously gives you that Africa jersey, but puts them uh, inside the top uh, five, four or five teams. They were fourth uh, yesterday. Now, Obia are starting to suffer. This is Ravensteiner, poor at least, uh, for the William Victoria team. And Ravensteiner, his partner. And I think they are just off the back of this uh, this group. Again, not try, not panicking if you see the group going away on a day like today. Just. Uh, yeah, it's an injection of pace from Wout Alleman, who, uh, according to his partner, is super strong on the climbs. And the Belgian is out the saddle here, putting some pressure on. Schurter and Finney are hanging on to it. Howard Groth looks as though he's hanging on. I don't know where Matt Beers is. Well, it looks like it's uh, Matt Beers. It's just a, you can see the tall figure of Matt Beers short, just a little bit behind. And Alleman knows that this is a real opportunity for them. They are past the 57 kilometer mark. In fact, they are into the, the into the 60s already in terms of the kilometers. We need to get a time check and at the 70 kilometer mark, but uh, already we can see out on the trails, massive move there by Buff Megamo and already a big split, just two teams in the mix. It's clear who has the firepower today in, in stage one in the 88 kilometer stage. And still some climbing to go. There's Jan Sapos and Fantis Pass to still to breach. And then it's the Asakai Boss section before they descend into Sarensburg. Nino Schurter riding defensively with his partner, Sebastian Finney. And uh, they are matching the Buff Megamo pair. Pedal stroke for pedal stroke. Hans Becking very much in touch, very much in control. And he certainly found a match in his partner, Wout Allemann. Yeah. He did that. As he got to the crest of that little drag, uh, 
Uh, Alaman looked over his shoulder to survey the damage, and he had done some significant damage. And there is uh, evidence of that damage. This is what's happened. Uh, this four-man break, and again, uh, you just cannot get a, a hand on how steep this is. If you look at the cadence they're cycling at their body positions, and uh, they really are working hard. It's very steep that. Yeah, and he's he's not in a way sticking back, so he is still in a way. Once, of course, uh, even make this gap bigger, and this is uh, just in a way to have uh, just this other uh, team with Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney um, with him, and uh, yeah, and it, it seems like he has, he's still he's pushing hard, and uh, I think that he also would even um, make the gap back bigger to the to the dropping uh, teams. Wout Allemann, the Belgian, uh, is a 28-year-old who won the European title, but he won early this year the Mediterranean Epic, a key event ahead of this race. And uh, the man who finished second to him there was uh, Georg Egger. Mark Stutzman was third, Sam Moli Porto fourth, Daniel Gessmeyer, who's racing here, was in fifth place. Then Baum was in seventh, Sevold ninth, and Steve John tenth. So a lot of these riders use that as a gauge and a preparation uh, for, for the Absa Cape Epic. Well, they were early uh, pace setters, the Bulls pair of Ursuba and Simon Schneller, and now they are a little bit off that, uh, that pace. Well, they, they, are, um, they were certainly in touch with the top 10 teams, and uh, the, it's a very select group of riders that, and all is not lost still. They're very much uh, lying in the top 10, and they know that patience is everything. Ursuba has been f we learnt from the very best first-hand experience, Carl Platt, knew that uh, it, he was highly aware and uh, was the master tactician of the eight-day stage race. And Ursula knows, just stay patient because anything can happen. If they just keep their powder dry and keep in touch and keep the pace as, as, as high as they can and keep their own rhythm, they know that they've got a chance of getting back in touch with that leading pair of Buff, Megamo and World Bicycle Relief. Another beautifully cut trail through the Feinbos on the uh, slopes of the Witzenberg Mountains as they head uh, up towards the imposing, uh, they'll get to it in a while, the Fantis Pass. I think they're heading up towards Jansa Pass. Okay, now I can't uh, make enough mention of the uh, trails. They are quite extraordinary. Now they brought uh, Marant Boerter from Detopia in to build some trails. They wrote those early on, Raptor Rise and Rakes. He did a great job there. You'll uh, write plenty of his later on uh, this week as they head towards Stellenbosch. But uh, all the trail builders in the uh, Western Cape here have done an extraordinary job over the years. And uh, the, these trails used for the Absa Cape Epic, they come and uh, just uh, rehabilitate old trails and uh, uh, build some new ones where they need it. And uh, that just adds to um, every mountain biker's experience because in years to come, these trails will uh, be there and uh, come and ride them by uh, signing on and uh, joining, paying a little fee at, uh, in the Tilbach, in the Tilbach Mountain Bike Club. Various uh, centers you can do that and then come and uh, enjoy these trails. So well, 26 kilometers to go. This is still, we're very much in the backloaded part of the stage. We spoke about the, the fact that the three climbs are, the three big climbs are towards the back end of the stage and we're well in the thick of those climbs. We're at the moment on Jansabos and we'll be soon descending and tackling the famous Fantis Pass. That's the final climb of the day, the most selective, the highest, and the last climb of the day before the riders descend into the, the race village in Sarensburg in Tulbach. They're heading towards that uh, Bergplatz very shortly, but uh, this is uh, going to be a, a real showdown on Fantis Pass. Have you ridden that? Sabine? Um, I was supposed to in 2020. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no, I never actually, um, because also um, beside or out of the race, uh, you, you're not allowed to yes, go, go yeah. to, to, yeah, you to ride, it. ride yeah. it. Yeah. And they used to have but big races here that uh, in the past, they, they still have one or two, but yeah, you can't, there are certain areas you can't, cannot ride, and that Fantis Pass is one of those. Uh, but uh, most of these other trails, you certainly can. And I guess, uh, so what I just heard from riders, it's also not um, necessarily a trail or a, a climb you, you, you really want you to do. You don't want to do, yeah. 
but it, it, it comes with a bit of a it, it, it brutally hard but then it comes with a nice prize at the other side because there's a beautiful trail coming up uh, you know there's always a bit of reward for for the hard effort but yeah it is a, a very very uh, it's uh, it sounds so it sounds you have done it no. <laughs> i was asked, i've watched it I'll, on I've watched it on our coverage. I, I just yeah. wanted to ask you. No, it's what, one I haven't done. What What was your gearing? No, 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 I haven't <laughs> done that. Um, I think now I get to put up my hand. Now you can say you've done it. The, you the, can tell the, us. With the it's motorbike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a motorbike in those days. No, that's a, that's a complete joke and a, a well over exaggeration. But it is, uh, it is a very tough climb, a very long climb. And uh, it depends on which way you look at it. It, uh, it, it's. Yeah, they say it's not a true pass, and uh, rather than crossing a, a mountain range, it provides access to the highest orchards in the Toolbach Valley. But I'm sure the riders aren't going to be thinking of that. 4.1 kilometers in length, and it gains 371 meters, an average of about 9%. And the initial ramps are steep, but not too brutal. It's uh, about 3.5% uh, for 750 meters after the one kilometer mark. And between kilometers two and three, it pitches steeply up to 20 to 30 percent. And there are some relief sections of about 10% or so, and the final kilometer is relentlessly steep to what they would call a false summit. And uh, really, it's it's a big challenge. If uh, if the riders take it too fast too soon, there's every chance of blowing up. So it's important to uh, measure efforts. And uh, it's one of those climbs that you think you see the top and actually not really. So you have to keep an eye on the data and know exactly what you've got yourself in for. But uh, certainly a, a very, uh, a very tricky climb, and we do have some information that Simon Schneller, in terms of the, the we've got a KOM stat at the moment. Simon Schneller is the fastest. 12 minutes, 12 minutes and 50 seconds it took him to get up. Played a decisive role in 2021. Uh, going back to to that race uh, in the the Green Epic, if you like, the one uh, late in the year, in October Epic. Was a factor there, and it will be, I'm sure, today, as, as all these uh, major, major climbs are play a role. You know, we we uh, ask the riders ahead of the uh, stage, you know, what, how are you feeling? What are you thinking of? Do do those, you know, as, as a as an elite athlete, when you're preparing for the stage, you're standing there. Have you have you done all that? Have you do you were you one of those riders go through those and say, right, we've got to, this. Get you uh, you definitely need to be prepared by if it comes to elevation and that you um, also in that you throw in in your training a lot of mm. actually climbs and also that you uh, that you make like you you simulate these massive um, days like like a queen stage where you uh, where you also try in, in your training blocks where you have days with over three thousand meters of yes. climbing that's uh, I think it's an essential thing that because um, you, you you have to deal with it. Your body have to deal with it because the next day comes another. Got to get accustomed to it, yeah. Another another big day, and um, I mean we don't have very long days, but a lot of, or if I say like from the from a kilometer perspective, not long long stages, but they all have a lot of uh, uh, elevation in it, and uh, that actually what also takes it out of the of the of the riders. You stand on the start line. You know you've done. When you get there, you know you've done the preparation. You know you've, you're ready for uh, for that. You've, w what you've prepared for is uh, to to suffer and to to uh, climb those uh, those uh, big big uh, mountains. Yeah, and it seems like you now it's flowing, like flowing down, and then mm. before it gets to the final big climb. Yeah, it's coming up. It's building up slowly but surely. Uh, a helicopter keeping a, a track from uh, up on high and our media e-bikes yes uh, so occasionally our connectivity to uh, the uh, bulls media e-bikes uh, will be uh, intermittent uh, we apologize for that we will always try and strive to produce the best possible images from uh, this route but it is uh, well if you just uh, just give it a thought how tough it is to uh, transmit live uh, you know, from from this event, the the big road events. Well, they, they have a lot of fixed wing aircraft high above flying and, and uh, providing uh, support and signal. But uh, this is an extraordinary uh, logistical feat and technical feat, uh, bringing you these live images from uh, deep in the uh, the country, the rural uh, parts of uh, the Western Cape. They are beautiful as well. The vineyards, the orchards, 
of the Tilbach Valley providing uh, fruit and uh, feeding uh, people all over the world. A lot of this fruit exported to uh, all parts of the world and uh, much of it uh, reaching the uh, local market as well. You can see this is uh, right up at the higher upper reaches of the uh, mountain slopes. That's what we're talking about. They're riding uh, almost above these uh, orchards. It'll tell you that they are in the, uh, the, the rarefied atmosphere, the, the high altitude of this mountain bike race today. Upwards of uh, around about the, 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 the top of uh, Fanti's Pass uh, is just short of 800 meters above sea level. So they, they're climbing very, very high from a base of around 200 meters. You're, uh, you're exactly accurate. It's uh, 749 meters exactly. Very, very steep uh, peaks, but... Tomorrow, it's, uh, more, tomorrow it should be like uh, almost 1,000 meters. So we're going yes, over the back trail. Yes, up to yes. The Witzenberg climb is up to 1,000 meters up there. That's a Cliffhanger, how, how high is that? Uh, we'll have to get to that in a while, that's but that's also that's extremely a high. Li yeah. a, li a little bit later in the week. <laughs> yeah, the, the big peaks in this part of the world, the uh, Groot Winter Peak, which presides over the uh, northern side of this valley, is around 2007, uh, 2,077 meters above sea level. So it gives you an idea how high these peaks are. The Klein Winter is just a couple of hundred meters shorter than that. Um, but uh, there are some uh, very, very big peaks here. Oh, you, Sabine, you talked talk about the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger that's the on stage four. It's the 88 kilometer stage with the most amount of climbing, the 3,000 meter climbing stage. 88 kilometer, 3,000 meters of climbing. A very tricky day out. And tricky? The, the well, certainly if you're <laughs> aiming for a general there's classification. No, there's no tricks there. It's <laughs> suffering. The, the, the cliffhanger yeah. is what we were talking oh. about. And that is up to 1,000 meters. Have you written that? 1,000 meters. It's Not also brand new. Isn't yes, it? new, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's one to avoid maybe for the time being. No, it's a, it will be a, a debut in the Absa Cape Epic. It's been written in uh, an event, a pre uh, Absa Cape Epic event, the Imbuco event, and it is an extraordinary uh, piece of trail and, a, and an amazing sight um, from up above. We'll see that in a few days' time. For now, though, this is the women's race that we're focused on and uh, the Ghost Factory Racing Team, Ann Terpstra and Nicole Kolo. So two who make a living out of racing the cross-country circuit week in and week out at the moment, managing it. They, you feel they couldn't be in a better position for them as they, they're wearing the, the leaders' jerseys. They can, they can to a degree dictate the pace, um, but they're in control here. We've got uh, Gomez Viefan and uh, Samara Shepard in the, the mix here, as well as uh, Candice Lil and uh, her partner, Mona Mittervalna and uh, Hayley Preen is uh, joined by uh, Lena Gero, the French champion. So that's the uh, elite group of four teams in the, in the front of this women's race here. How do you see it unfolding today? Yeah, I almost believe that we, the tactic would be at the last climb, really like to make a big move and get away from the others. Yeah. Everyone's just keeping their powder dry until the uh, big climb, the Funtis Pass climb. As uh, they are heading uh, up, I fancy, towards the Klipperafir uh, descent. Kola, Terpstra, Gomez Viafan, and it's uh, Samara Shepard, and just behind her, Candice Lil, and then uh, Mona Mitevala. Great to see people out there. They made the effort to get out and cheer these riders along. How cool that is. Spectator support alongside the trails. Not always easy to get out to. Uh, the trail some of them uh, would have driven and then walked quite a while to get there the men on the left hand side dropping down i would think jan sabos uh, is the trail that they are heading into now another beautiful uh, trail as i said this whole section clipper and jan sabos around uh, 17.8 kilometers and uh, close on 700 meters of climbing just this block between sort of 48 and uh, 68 kilometers a really really tough uh, section and that's the sort of appetizer to the day's uh, piece de resistance yeah and the ladies they in a way just also got rid of uh, of the hydration bags um, there was a, a water point before and we probably just now took for the last bit uh, water bottles and uh, um, intended over the 
um, the, the hydration bags to the to the team. Yeah, it's another. We were you, you elaborated a bit on it and how how, uh, how beneficial it is to have those hydration packs and, and the use uh, for these uh, elite ladies and men. They use them up to the first water point, or maybe some we've seen some pick them up um, at a second water point, so that they don't have to stop at a third. Uh, it also depends uh, yeah. how big uh, the, the the distance is mm. between the water points, and um, when you also can expect, yeah, the the biggest heat or. Is the section in between? Is it a lot of single trail where you can't actually just easily grab your bottle? So this is also comes into the calculation when when you just take bottles or the hydration pack. Okay. Setting the pace for seems well in control. Nicole Collar and Anna Terpstra in leading the Toyota Specialized 91 team up. Spare a thought for Mona Vitavolna. She is. Uh, she has been suffering over the last couple of days. She said she had heat stroke on the first on the prologue, but still very much in touch and doing really well for somebody who's feeling perhaps a little bit under the weather. But we'll see later on on Fanti's pass. They have passed the uh, 50. They yet to pass the 57 kilometer mark, um, but we'll be able to see. We'll get a time check of them and just how much time they've put into their rivals. Uh, we saw the 30 se 30 38 kilometers back, uh, 38 seconds back, I beg your pardon, was Lena Giroux and Haley Preen at the uh, 44 kilometer mark. And they were the, really the top five teams in contention, but now it's very much four teams in contention Ghost Factory Racing, Toyota Specialized 91, Cannondale Factory Racing, and Efficient Infinity, SCB SRAM, Vera Loza, and Lexus Skada still staying in touch. Four teams in the mix in the women's category. Very exciting. Absolutely. And Terpstra has put some uh, good preparation. She was doing a lot of uh, cross-country races. The Sunshine Cup in Cyprus, she was dominant there. Won uh, five races there. So um, she's been putting a lot of prep. And, and again, the, the, the contrast between those who are focusing on uh, the cross-country and those who are focusing on the uh, marathon seasons. And this season is... I wouldn't say complicated, but it, it uh, has had added dynamic with the Olympic Games uh, coming uh, later in the year. We've also got the World Cup circuit, the World Championships. So some riders perhaps deciding that uh, they didn't want to, uh, to take on the Absa Cape Epic in an Olympic year. Others deciding that uh, it would benefit them. Lino Scherter is, is here um, taking part in it. He's going to be certainly one of those to look at, uh, at the Olympic Games. Terpstra and uh, Kola Terpstra pretty certainly be at the Olympic Games. Oh, no. Gomez Viefan trying to get through there on the right-hand side, just heading into this little single track. Couldn't get uh, past uh, Kola, and they were dropping into the uh, Toyota Tough section, and uh, Gomez Viefan trying to, try to do what uh, Sabine was talking about a little earlier, try and get in front there and slow the pace, because she knows these two cross-country stars might just get away here. And already there's a little gap uh, back to, uh, to Samara Shepard. Well, they know it's... Um Samara Shepard and uh, Sofia gomez Villafana know that uh, these two are the, uh, some of the fastest cross-country riders in the business. And on these technical trails, there is a threat that they could open a gap. And if, even if just with just a few, ex just, just a bit of extra seconds as you get to the bottom, it means that uh, the uh, defending teams or the teams that have lost those few seconds have to spend some energy catching up. And that can make all the difference. It all adds up over the next... Uh, Eight days, or the next six days after, even after today, well, there's plenty of single track to come. In fact, it's the most single track I think we've ever seen in the race. So that really makes all the difference. If the teams are have technical adeptness, they can just put a few seconds in, which means that the, uh, the riders who are not quite as good on the technical stuff have to catch up. And uh, if you add that up over a few, over a few days, a few hours, it uh, it takes its toll. Yeah, and Nicole Collos, she is a very good technical rider, and she, if you also just see a bit, like, if you look, it's it's like effortless how she actually surfs down, and um, and uh, yeah, between um, between uh, the Ghost Factory racing team and, okay, um, Sofia Villafane, she's sti staying with them, but to Samara Shepard, there's already, like, a gap um, uh, opened up. Yeah, so it's... Uh, definitely like that she, she just like let it nicely flow and uh, she she knows very well also to to read the surface and has a good position on the bike also perhaps a tactical error was the other 
really top level cross country rider Mona Mitterwalder uh, would have been uh, would have been good to have if she was in the front as well because she would have also been able to keep up with the with uh, the Ghost Factory Racing team from her skills that she's uh, honed on the World Cup circuit and the same as Candice Law who's also raced on the World Cup circuit um, and uh, just the bit of a tactical error that they weren't in in right on the wheels of the Ghost Factory Racing team. Well, I suppose it, it, tactically it is, but uh, physically, if you cannot be there, they, she was she was pretty much at the back of that group of, of eight riders. It's very difficult to to get to, to the front. Even even the third rider trying to get get in couldn't couldn't find her way in there. But uh, Terpstra and Kola unbelievably uh, good on that uh, technical descent. So that's uh, the uh, theatre today here in the Tilbach Valley, the Saronsberg Farm is the start and finish village and they are doing a full lap of this beautiful valley some of the most rugged terrain and uh, trails imaginable and they're making it look easy aren't they well the amateurs further back might not be finding it just uh, quite as easy but at the moment we're building up to a sensational finish This is the Apps of Cape Apex, the pinnacle of the uh, Epic series. And there you've got a little brief uh, look at what uh, you can do if you uh, uh, choose to take on the, the Epic series events. The Andorra Epic, the Four Islands in Croatia, that's coming up soon. And the Swiss Epic as well. And of course, the Wines to Wells here in South Africa late in the year, November. All part of uh, global mountain biking. And uh, as I said, this is the pinnacle event, the Apps of Cape Epic, eight days, the only one that is of that duration. Now we are focusing on the uh, men's race here and the yellow jerseys uh, on the uh, front of this race now, or well, one of them anyway, Nino Schurter, Sebastian Finney has uh, a rider sandwich in front of him. And that might be uh, Howard Grotz. In fact, it's Wout Allemann and then uh, Hans Becking. Question is, that's uh, Schurter and uh, Allemann just behind him. And uh, they are heading towards the Funtis Pass climb, the build-up. They are close actually to the last water point of today's stage. At that pass, yep. That comes up there, the Italian, there's Beers and Grotz. So the missing team here, are they there? There's the Obeer team. Obeer. Obeer Liet. Where are they? Are they up, uh, up the road or are they... Look like there are nine riders there. Maybe uh, one up the road, I'm not sure, but uh, they are now heading on to uh, the Fantis Pass and uh, the Boerplas water point, which is the last water point, will get a timing uh, checkpoint there just short of 70 kilometers. And that'll give us an idea as to the gaps further back. Indeed, and they haven't yet passed that Boerplas water point. We'll soon be passing there, and we will be able to get a time check. And of course, the all-important roll call as to who the um, who the teams are in touch. But very much in control. The yellow jerseys of uh, Sebastian Fini 
and Nino Schurter. Yes, so, in fact, yeah, the uh, Aubert um, team it's not, not there. The, the, not within this group. Yeah. Have they flown the coop? Are they up the road? That's the question. Beers and the Grotz at the back of this group. And uh, Beers starting to have to pace a little because Grotz uh, is the one who's taking a little bit of strain early on in this climb. The oh, gap is starting to open there. Good to see them if they're keeping a good rhythm. The gap is uh, it's growing slightly and it's always a good sign when uh, the gap doesn't suddenly grow because it means that the riders have been sensible. They haven't gone too far into the red. They haven't blown up. They're just keeping their own rhythm. But we will be keeping an eye on that gap, Howard Grotz. And just uh, having a look back to see who's behind him. But the important thing for the defending champion is to look after his teammate. He is a very, he's a very good bike rider. There's no doubt about it. But one of his core skills is that he's managed. He's able to manage partners very well. I think his first partner in Laps Cape Epic may well have been uh, Alan Hathaway, um, and they were very, very, I'll tell you, very uh, high quality team. Good friends they are too. But uh, Hathaway's focus is uh, elsewhere this year. He's one of those who's focuses on cross country and the Olympics later in the year. Would all right, we're on to uh, Fanti's pass here. And as I said, we are looking for the Obeer Leard Speed Company team. We uh, are doing the uh, rounds uh, on the various communication devices. Yeah, and we uh, have a bit of a word out there. Yes. For, yeah, we had some unofficial time checkers. 38 seconds back. Back. Our speed company, oh. the Obeer Leard Speed Company, have lost the four of our 40 seconds off the pace, and we're just watching them. Perhaps they'll be uh, looking up, uh, up the road to the pairing of Toyota 91 Specialized and Pago Eurostil, one minute 40 back. So the group up front is the World Bicycle Relief uh, team of Nino Schurt and uh, Sebastian Finney. And then the, the uh, William Vittoria team of uh, Fabian Rabensteiner and uh, Samueli Poro and the Buff Megamo team. And that is uh, Hans Becking and his partner, Wart Alemann, as they move, uh, pull into the uh, Bergplatz uh, water point. This is the final uh, water point. And now we're back with uh, our the women's teams. And uh, Sophia Vierfan has gone to the front of this little group here. She's got to be careful, though. Doesn't want to uh, push it too hard and... Uh, See her partner, she's just dragging onto the back now. Is uh, Samara Shepard on the back of the Ghost Factory Racing pair as well? There we go, two hours and 45. Uh, and here, Mona Mitibala and uh, Candace Lil just uh, yo yoing a little bit, but uh, closing the gap onto uh, the back of Samara Shepard. All back together again. They're looking, Candace Lil, another rider who's an expert at managing partners, and she'll be looking after Mona Mitibala. Making sure she gets through the day because she knows the firepower of the Austrian. Well, but yeah. it also looks like that uh, we had now dropped also the uh, efficient uh, infinity yes. team with Vera Loza and uh, Alexis uh, Skorda. They're off that group for the defending champion and her American partner. Mona Mitavala uh, uh, has had uh, plenty of experience racing in South Africa. She won the uh, Tankwa Trek a few weeks ago just over the mountains in uh, the Witzenberg uh, region uh, with Candice Lill. But that race traditionally has always been uh, one of the hottest races of the year. But this year, for uh, uh, different reasons, it wasn't quite as uh, hot. The maximum temperatures around uh, the low 30s rather than uh, high 30s, early 40s. So uh, she, perhaps the conditioning she would have gained from riding in the heat there wasn't... Uh, this year but she's hanging in there she's all right she's in this lead group which is where she wants to be but, uh, slowly attritionally the uh, the teams are dropping off we've lost one that the Vera Lossa and Alexis Skada from this group and now you see like uh, Samara Shepard in the back uh, right back hard gear like uh, pushing hard like with a uh, low cadence and I was still you, you need to actually to try to keep uh, a smooth pedaling with a higher cadence because otherwise you actually you, 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 you lose power. 
Yes, Sofia Gomez Vierfan, perhaps uh, mindful of a Samara Shepherd uh, at the back there and just setting a pace that will uh, suit her rather than uh, uh, going too hard. And uh, Ghost Factory Racing quite happy to sit on her wheel. Uh, beautiful views over the uh, Tilbach Valley as the stage one of the APSA Cape Epic unfolds here. 88 kilometers, 2,450 meters of climbing and the first marathon stage of the uh, race that measures all and uh, well a little measurement will be taken today on these mountain slopes and uh, rugged trails okay, the men are heading up Fonti's pass the women are closing in on it as well So the men making their way up uh, Fanti's Pass and the drama starting to unfold there is that uh, the early pace setters of Bear Laird Speed Company have lost touch with that uh, lead group. But there are three teams in that lead group with the uh, Toyota Specialized pair trying to regain contact with it. They're the fourth team. Meanwhile, there are three teams in this uh, lead group in the women's race. And uh, it is uh, Sofia Gomez Viafan as well as uh, Samara Shepard and uh, Candice Lilla, the Mona Mitavala, and then the Ghost Factory Racing uh, pair of Ann Terpstra and Nicole Kohler. I fancy that uh, Lil and uh, Mitavala have gone to the front here. Samara Shepard at the back, then it's the Ghost Factory, then Sofia Gomez Viafan, and then Candice Lil is setting the pace. Mona Mitavala on her wheel. I guess also then communicating with uh, Mona how she feels and if they, and, uh, she gets uh, she got the okay to also just go with a bit of higher pace. It's very important that you just in a way try to to ride a nice pace and also don't break your partner. The drama unfolding in the men's race is that uh, Vart Alaman is just an absolute beast on this climb. He is setting an incredible pace for uh, Hans Becking, who's trying to hang on to it. Nino Schurter, Sebastian Finney have just lost a little bit of contact there. And uh, the uh, team of Samueli Poro and Fabian Ravensteiner have dropped off now. And uh, closing in on them are Howard Grotz and Matt Beers. We're back with the uh, stage one drama and the women's race here. And uh, it looks like uh, Sofia Gomez Viafan has uh, just lost touch with that uh, group there. So now just two teams. Uh, in fact, Samara Shep has also gone. So it's Candice Lil and Mona Mitavala and uh, the Ghost Factory team. I guess that uh, Sofia Villafana just in a way realized that uh, Samara Shepard is not with the group anymore. And she now just dropped back to uh, get back to her partner and uh, give her support. So the drama in both the men's and women's races, the uh, heavy toll being taken on these uh, massively difficult climbs. The men are on that, the biggest climb of perhaps, uh, well, certainly today, and one of the biggest and toughest of the entire week, Fanti's Pass. And the women are heading up Yansa Boss, and uh, they will make the descent, and then they will begin uh, the Fanti's Pass climb. But uh, Candice Lil and Mona Mitavala, who started the day not sounding overly confident about how she was feeling but uh, sort of just hoping that uh, things would come right today well it's looking pretty good for the Austrian she's just 22 she's already a double marathon world champion and a World Cup winner so she's a seriously talented racer there's no question about that and uh, behind her and Terpstra and uh, Nicole Kola to uh, worthy uh, World Cup uh, races Terpstra a four-time World Cup winner so she knows what it's like to win at that level. Now back to the men's race on Fanti's Pass. It's distinctive as it uh, is cut into the side of the mountain here. World Bicycle Relief and Buff Megamo, the two teams up ahead. And Victoria, the Villa Victoria Factory, well, they've dropped a little bit further back than those numbers suggest. This is from the uh, water point 
at uh, Bergplas at around 68 kilometers. They're a little bit further up the road now. And Buko and Paiga Eurostil are fighting for the Africa jersey. Paiga went hard early on. They seem to be coming back to Mbuko now after Marco Hubert had an, uh, an early uh, mechanical issue. They've recovered very quickly from that. It seems to all in touch, the, the top three contending teams for that, uh, for that coveted red jersey. And also in that group, the Bulls. Rose Huber and Simon Schneller. Alaman and Becking, Schurter and Finney. Well, the Buff Megamite team are looking very, very strong indeed. It's almost good. got an alpine look to it, hasn't it? It has indeed, and it, 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 it indeed, good yeah, look yeah, up like to the, the trail. Yeah, Dolomites, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Dolomites, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and spectacular as they're right deep into the Vintuk Mountains here. Really, really beautiful, uh, rugged terrain. And... Uh, yeah. Quite inaccessible other than on a mountain bike. Well, I was just going to say, Gerald, this is not something that any, anyone can just come and ride. Um, it has to be part of the part of the Cape Epic. It's a unique part of the Cape Epic. It's not for everyone. So it is actually, it, in fact, it's strictly forbidden to ride. Is it, is it actually the second time? What, 2022, uh, the postponed one? 21. 21, Tw they, 21. they rode, yes. Yeah, not this, they yeah. did a 21, 21 yeah. Here, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's only the second time it has been uh, ridden in the Cape Epic. It's a spectacular climb and uh, turning out to be pivotal in perhaps the outcome of today's stage. Once they get to the top of this, a very fast descent and then into the beautiful Asakai Bosch single track, which is quite uh, uh, covered and uh, it's a uh, canopy, if you like. And then the run down back into the valley and into the finish is very fast. Who is it going to be who's going to emerge as the uh, stage winners on the yellow jerseys? Schurter and Finney. Well, Finney's proving to be an absolutely superb partner for uh, the greatest of all time, Nino Schurter. Looking for a third Absa Cape Epic win here. And Sebastian Finney on his first journey around. And all these new combinations that are piecing together here. The only uh, team that are back together you know, amongst the leading uh, contenders are the Albert. Liet Speed Company pair of uh, Eger and Baum. Yes, the, uh, at that time check, the 68-kilometer mark, albeit Liet Speed Company, were one minute and three seconds down. Out there on their own in no man's land between the two groups, the lead group of uh, World Bicycle Relief, Buff Megamo, and at the time, it was Willier Victoria Factory and Toyota 91 Specialized. And just looking at the overall, GC, overall general classification, Looking at the teams that are right there in the mix, World Bicycle Relief have a 51 second lead over Toyota Specialized 91. That lead is growing now. If you were to take the virtual lead right now, that lead is growing. But Buff Megamo very much in touch. One minute and 32 seconds back on general classification off the pace, off the, uh, off the time set in the prologue by World Bicycle Relief. Nino Schota, Sebastian Finney, and uh, Matt, and, and Hans Becking, and Mark Allemann in touch with each other. Well, Candice Lil doing a fantastic job. How she has, uh, well, she's got four second places in the apps of Cape Epic and would dearly love to correct that uh, this year. She's got a work cut out, but she's got a very, very strong partner in the, Olymp the uh, marathon world champion. And uh, also she has now the years of experience and I think a new lease on confidence and belief in herself that has uh, re really given her such a power and strength. I think uh, the, the second place at the World Championships and she's won some races uh, in Europe uh, last couple of weeks, so she's feeling confident. And she knows uh, what comes, uh, so she definitely has done these, uh, these routes here. Um, and she's the only one in, in, in this group um, yes. of, of uh, the two teams. Um, yeah, and. Uh, I guess she can also then, in a way, just just also how she can pace uh, up uh, on these climbs and uh, to also take the, the final fancy pass. Talk to us about how that the importance of winning is to one's confidence and winning um, early on in your career. Um, I mean, if you go back to your first significant win that gave you the belief that you realized this, I can, I can do this, and I'm going to win some big titles. Yeah, it's actually a long time back. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but also um, it was um, so. 2000 was for me the big dream, the big goal to. 
be part of the Olympic Sydney. Games in yes. Sydney. And um, at that time, it wasn't about being winning or uh, get going for a podiums uh, place because I also realized I wasn't I wasn't that or I wasn't at that stage yet. So, but I took um, with uh, being part of the uh, or joining the Olympic Games um, gave me actually so much motivation. Then the following year, 2001, that actually wa that was my breakthrough where I was like. Um, I, w I became f uh, bro uh, won the bronze medal at Worlds. I, I won the silver medal at the European Championships. So that actually, okay. so the the, uh, the yeah this this uh, um, motivation which I took from the Olympics yeah. that because I said okay this time is still too too early but next at the next Olympics I want to be on that podium. That was my that was my goal. I saw you do that as well actually in Beijing. So 2000. And uh, 2000 Olympics was the motivation, and then the the confirmation were those two medals the next year that actually I'm motivated and my motivation helped me get to the medals. I can do this. I'm going to now push yeah, on and, and, and you 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 see that it uh, that it works that you yeah. are actually able also that you are competitive that you can that you can't that you don't have to stick back behind the big names. That you, in a way, also uh, become a bit—I wouldn't say cheeky—but yeah, you are, you just gain self-confidence. And I'm also someone, and I also have yeah. skills and uh, have the performance. I can perform. And I think that's what we we're seeing from someone like Anne Turfster as well. Uh, you know, that that slightly—I mean, Mona Mitterval is 22 and she's already world champion. So, but Anne Turfster has taken a while to mature into a race winning at World Cup levels. Uh, Candice Lill's uh, performance at the World Championships, and it does instill you with that, I belong and I'm, I, I can win here. Yeah, and, and of course things also, sometimes it's like things need to fall a bit into mm. place, and uh, Candice also, since um, she, she, I think she works now with Barry Orson, a yes. very good coach since about two years, which also showed her like maybe also a bit of different path of how you also um, find a good balance between training but also recovery because if you train too hard too much then it's like you fatigue your body permanently and when you if it comes to the ra to racing when you actually you can't push anymore so it's also a good balance between um, training and uh, recovery did you have a coach for most of your uh, yes, career yeah. Yeah. critical that it's uh, for me it's essential because also the knowledge and but also it's it's also body feeling because you also need to communicate back to your coach how do you feel and what works for you what doesn't work maybe also find um, other way I mean there are many Rome, uh, ways to roam yes so just also maybe find another way which works for you better to get to, to, to the same goal right fascinating uh, thanks uh, Sabine uh, unfortunately, our, our signal out in the uh, more uh, remote areas of the trail is very intermittent. Uh, we do apologize for that. We're trying our utter best to bring you uh, images of the race. But uh, as soon as we get uh, clean and uh, consistent pictures, we'll bring you that. But for now, let's take a look at uh, a, uh, a bike check. And every year when we come to the Absa Cape Epic, there's... Uh, uh, oh, hundreds of new bikes if you like uh, the different manufacturers are bringing out the updated models adding new tech and uh, new design and uh, well the bulls media e-bike is something uh, that uh, has pushed the boundaries and i think uh, neil gardner was the man who did the little bike check on that let's have a look at no, it no thanks just bart uh, bart 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 branches uh, let's have a look at it 2016 was the first time we, we did the, the e bike project with, with the live stream and the cameras following the guys. So, yeah, it's number, this is number eight. But also, uh, following the riders with an e-bike, it was, back in the days, uh, definitely something new, and Cape Epic came up uh, for the first time with it. it. 
was it a, a, a bull's project? Was it your idea? Who came up with it? Yeah, it it kind of was my my idea. Like when I was when I was racing, I thought, hey, how can I how can I bring the experience that I have in this race, which is so cool and I love so much, to to the people out there to experience it like like we are we are doing. And then I, I thought, hey, why not attach a lot of cameras to uh, the bike or the rider and this and that to, to yeah get all the different angles. But you explained it very simple, but I think you have to be more like a pro just <laughs> to, follow, to, to follow the pros in real. I mean, you, have, you need to have the skills. Also at an e-bike, of course, you have to, yeah, some support on the climbs, but the, 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 the descents, there's no support at all. You still have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to all the climbs and the steeper the better for me <laughs> so I can relax. <laughs> But like you said, like that, I mean, those guys are the best in the world. They are the best cross country riders in the world. And they are super fast on the downhills with the, with their light bikes. And of course we carry more equipment even, even, yeah. with the backpack, with all the camera equipment. And it's, it's, it's tough to, to, to follow on the, on the downhills, but yeah, some, somehow we try to manage. And do you get the respect of the riders as well? I mean, you were riding like a rider uh, in, in a peloton, in, in a group on the yeah. single tracks. Um, how do they react to you? Uh, I mean, everybody everybody knows the, the the benefits of of having cool footage and and stuff. So they really they really value it, and and we get the respect of the riders. But also, we try to be there, like in the live action, but in, not interfere anyhow. So we always take a step back if we see yeah the situation might come up up. And I think it also helped that I was racing the epic before. Just to just to predict certain situations and and how things will how the movements are in 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 the field and in the rider. Interesting stories what you're telling now, um, but the bike now. Um, tell us a bit more about this a completely new Bulls e-bike. We have a complete new Bulls bike. Everything on the yeah, it's literally it's the game changer. So it's called uh, Bulls Buka Evo AM2. We have a full carbon front triangle. We have a rear alloy swing arm. Uh, 150 millimeter uh, suspension front and rear, bulletproof tires, <laughs> just uh, so we don't get get any flats. We have a new nice uh, carbon uh, cockpit which keeps controls re- very clear, and the the game changer and and really also a proof of concept for for here for for us for the race in South Africa is the Pinion uh, MGU. It's motor gearbox unit, and it's. It's basically all the gears, 12 gears, integrated into the motor. So you have electronic shifting, very precise all the time. There's no setting of, of gears. And uh, also with a belt drive now, which means it's pretty much maintenance free. So set and forget. <laughs> and there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool options that, that come with, with this setup. Like for instance, for us, we need to focus on so many things. Um, the filming, the riding, not to be in the way. And sometimes you just, for instance, in a trail, you just forget to shift in the right gear. And now with this, you can just coast along and choose the gear that you want. Or even if you're standing still, you can choose another gear and be in the right. Amazing, amazing how quick uh, the development of bikes uh, comes actually every year again. But also, yeah, as uh, a segment, the e bike segment. Which probably is the, the the best in in sales for the the, the bike market at the moment. But yeah. impressive how quick the improvements and developments uh, coming every year. It's uh, nice to hear this. Yeah, it's it's for me it's just fun and and I think everybody profits from from these type of developments. All type of riders can can yeah just have fun and enjoy the. And it's a never it's a never ending story probably. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to wait this bike too? We, we did all the all the, the pro bikes. We did. <laughs> we we can. Last time the scale didn't went up that high. So. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's nice. I don't know. Maybe we have to lift it together. But <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or you can hold the microphone. <laughs> it's twenty five, but the scale only goes up. Okay. One more time. What's that? Let's see. Error again. Error again. It goes above 20. <laughs> Stefan, even as an e-bike rider, you have to ride all the stages. Um, I wish you good luck for this week. The weather forecast, it's good. Maybe a little bit of rain on Friday, what I saw. But uh, yeah, good luck and uh, nice to see uh, that footage, what you all make uh, every Thank year you. again. Thanks, Bart. Yeah. Really looking forward. I see you around. Yes. <laughs> Ja.
Fascinating uh, how technology is moving at such a pace. Uh, well, every industry, but uh, in the mountain biking uh, and cycling world, unbelievable. Integrated gearbox in that uh, e-bike belt driven. Um, Neil, you almost couldn't sit down. You were so excited with that technology. What well, makes perfect sense and. Uh it's definitely a, a new development and we expect to see more in the future. There is, uh, there's certainly more on the horizon. Watch this space um, in terms of internal gearboxes and belt drives. And, uh, to just, it, it's a big transition, it's a big move, but there will be, there's certain to be more of those. Back with the uh, action, live action. Now, uh, cameraman there on that uh, motorbike is keeping a close eye on this. It is uh, Sebastian Finney at the back here, Wart Alleman, and then Nino Schurter, the man setting the pace up front is the Dutch champion, Hans Becking, hammering it along as they get to the top of the pass, and they start uh, the descent down uh, off the top of Fanti's Pass. Aschai Bosch awaits a beautiful trail for them, but this is uh, the race. These are the two teams at the sharp end of the men's race on stage one of the Absa Cape Epic. Well, we can see there just from the fact that the Bulls Media e-bike is behind these two teams that there is a big gap to the next place teams. We saw William Victoria Factory in the mix earlier on. We saw Toyota Specialized 91, Matt Beers uh, and uh, Howard Grotz just falling off the pace a bit. Orbia Liet Speed Company one minute back. And it's those five teams that were in contention for the stage. And now it looks pretty much between those two teams, World Bicycle Relief and Buff Megamo, all to play for now for these two. They've got, uh, they've, they've breached the highest point in the race. It's not necessarily all downhill from here. They still have to navigate the Askai Boss section and then the long descent into the race village in Sarensburg. Yeah, nothing like uh, the climbs that they've had to deal with. Just some uh, short, uh, sharp little uh, uh, peaks, but nothing too serious. But uh, yep, it's going to come down to your feel. These two, I don't know. How far back uh, the William Vittoria team are and uh, Beers and uh, Grotz are, whether they are well off the pace and won't be able to make their way back. But uh, that is all part of the fascinating story unfolding here. So just those two teams on the front of the race at the moment. World Bicycle Relief and the Yellow Jerseys having won the prologue yesterday. Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney were those GVT yellow jerseys at the start of today's stage. Buff Megamo, the uh, Spanish team with two uh, riders, one from the Netherlands and one from Belgium. They are in that uh, group and they started the day one minute and 32 seconds behind World Bicycle Relief. And uh, third on the trail when last we checked were William Victoria Factory. And uh, they were started t today some way off it. Now, this is a little perspective on the where the gaps are. Again, short, sharp climbs that uh, just flicking forward. So they're not that far off the pace. That looked as though it's Grotz, could be Grotz and uh, Beers, a lighter coloured. The Victoria pair, the William Victoria factory pair of Rabenstein and Poro in their darker jerseys. Well, all credit to, if, uh, if we are correct, all credit to the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team. It's so hard when you lose touch with the lead group. There is such a, a it, it does affect the morale a little bit. And the key job at that point, when you do lose touch, if you're a team that is uh, not quite on the pace, is to keep the rhythm. And Matt Diaz is an expert at that. He's an expert at managing partners, expert at keeping a good rhythm. And all credit to them for keeping their hopes of a stage win alive and also their hopes on overall GC alive. They are 51 seconds back of the lead uh, on general classification of Nino Schurter and Sebastian Fini. And uh, they know exactly, it's a long week. It's a 26 hour week. And we're only into our number four at the moment, or just coming into our five. And it is going to be a big, a big day out and a big week out as well. We expect to see if it's this close with the top three teams and also, don't forget, we've got all the Elliott Speed Company who could easily come good during the week. They're only a minute back at that traverse time check. And William Vittorio Factory, the ever-present Rabensteiner and Samuela Poro. Five big teams still in the mix. Here they come. Yeah, yeah so Matt Beers here, schön uh, pull, pulls um, Howard Grotz. Uh, uh, and he tries, of course, to bring him back, his partner, uh, to the leading teams. 
And he has a good pace. Yeah, he's a phenomenal. He's got, he has been in, uh, in unbelievable form. He broke his collarbone late last year in the Lifetime Series in the gravel. And this is the uh, Ravensteiner portal combination. The William Victoria factory team in uh, fourth place also dragging themselves back. Perhaps we will have them all uh, four teams coming down the mountain and heading into Tilbach all together. That's yeah, it's a gap, that's for sure. And uh, the, the key thing is here, yeah, they'll be able to see how close they are. Absolutely. Uh, that helps also to, in a way, to give you an idea how far um, the, the other teams are ahead. And that you're also trying in a way to just you count the seconds and see if you can if you can even so even so slightly close the gap and it's after fonti uh, there was there are still some some kicks were still it's a bit up and down so and um, yeah maybe they can still make it work to to close the gap a bit more I tell you, Howard Grotz is getting an idea of just what an engine that uh, uh, Matt Beers is because he is, he's just powered his way back onto the uh, onto that group in yeah, phenomenal he, well, he, he pulls he pulls him to the, to the other two teams yeah and if we think about back to 2018 howard grotz should have a familiar feeling yes. riding with yaroslav kulhavi yes. another massive motor of the yeah. uh, peloton uh, so he'll be he'll know exactly what to rely on and, and exactly when but the gaps are not big yeah. we could well he probably be he probably has still the bite marks in yes. his hand <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is this is this uh, spectacular Asakai Bosch trail and uh, there's no question that the the quartet up front were determined not to try and uh, let them join that group and they are hammering here uh, Hans Becking. It might be also that Hans is uh, Hans Becking is not aware how quickly uh, Matt Beers is actually yeah. coming from behind so we are just now focusing um, on the on these two teams and uh, but Matt Beers he has like them uh, ahead of him and it's like it's really like a magnet and he just gets sucked to it he's got them in the sights in his sights and the howard grotz is just hanging on for dear life behind and uh, well behind them ravenstein and poro were also trying to latch onto this train look at them there they come. just yeah seconds and yeah he's almost closing now the gap and then we'll have to jump in front of stefan if it's stefan or if it's yeah <laughs> i think it might be yeah that's uh, but Beers is just uh, an absolute uh, powerhouse. He looks over his shoulder, makes sure his partner's uh, with him. And he's managed this really well. Clearly, that the, the, the Funties pass took a toll on them. And they said, right, don't worry, let them go. We'll, 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 we can get back. And then this is exactly what he's doing. And Howard Groth's showing incredible determination here to, to uh, hang with his partner. It's very encouraging um, from the how Howard Groth's is... Uh, he had big shoes to fill with Chris mm. Levins and, of course, with Jordan Saru, both world champions in short, uh, short track formats, speed merchants of note. And uh, there, was, there were some questions as to whether he'd be able to match the speed of the likes of Nino Schert and Sebastian Finney and, of course, the uh, Buff Megamo team. But uh, those doubts are being put to rest right now, certainly with resolve and strength of character being able to get back after uh, losing touch. A fantastic performance from the American. All credit to this team. And in touch, back in touch, are the top three teams. It's uh, World Bicycle Relief, Buff Megamo, and Toyota Specialized 91. Short way back, we saw Willia Vittoria Factory. They should, they would want to take just a few risks, hopefully just to uh, get back in touch with these top three teams. To keep their GC hopes alive, they always seem to come good later on in the week. And they are coming good early in the week, too. Impressive. They've had a great showing, Ravenstein and Samuel Poro, at the race. The team has uh, been in, appeared at the uh, Absa Cape Epic in various liveries. We saw them appear as, but we used to call them the Trekkies, and now they are riding Willio bikes, and Victoria is another title sponsor, the tire sponsor. Ravenstein and Samuel Poro have often swapped partners. They, they always come, seem to come with a team of four, and uh, the last minute, keeping their opponents, keeping their rivals guessing, and make some last minute changes. Just the perfect combo. And Ravensteiner and Samuel Poro. Good communication between these two. They are a tried and tested partnership for sure. Again, exploring these beautiful trails of uh, Tilbach here. They uh, have uh, done the mountain bike community proud. The uh, passionate uh, mountain bike community here in uh, Tilbach, Dion Wilkins, and uh, 
his team, Grant Clack and Tim Wilkins, and uh, bringing in uh, the trailbuilders like Miran Buerta to uh, uh, help them out uh, it really is uh, fantastic. And uh, these very best riders in the world are doing them justice here. Howard Groth sticking in to stay with this group now. He's made, they've made the effort now. They must just uh, absorb a bit of the uh, pressure and then uh, prepare for what could be a thrilling fair. Oopsie! Down goes uh, our media e-bike briefly, just slipping out. That 25-kilogram beautiful bike. But uh, no problem at all. And now he's got to chase back to, to regain contact with that lead group. So. Interesting to see that, they, uh, that the World Bicycle Relief allowed, I wouldn't say allowed, but uh, they've uh, let Hans Baking set the pace on this downhill section. And uh, that could be telling. We know how good the skills of Anino Shotohan. He could pose an advantage on these on this section, perhaps uh, giving themselves a bit of a gap. Him and Finney could get a bit of a gap for a stage win. But we have seen them ride very defensively. Haven't always seen them a lead. We've seen them have been in the front a couple of times, but uh, there's been no aggressive drive coming from Nino Shota and Sebastian Finney. They know what they've got to do. They've got to defend those yellow jerseys, and the less they stick their necks out, the better. It's all about uh, measuring your efforts, and they know that they can defend today. They could be, they could match the pace of any of the teams out there, and they are happy to uh, to follow Buff Megamo down these trails. They drop out of this uh, beautiful trail. The two media bulls, media bikes now uh, with this group there. But uh, they are now in a race red hot mode because the uh, finish will come rapidly now. Most of the climbing is pretty much done. And uh, it is now a race uh, to uh, Tilbach. And uh, well, overall, the yellow jerseys will be looking good now. Let's see here. Here they come. There's uh, Rabensteiner, yep, yeah, and uh, Poro. They're not far off. Oopsie, he's missed the turning. He's missed the turning. Oh, no, he hasn't. I thought he'd missed that one over there. <laughs> I would say 15 seconds or so. That's, yeah. a, that's a completely, it's a, it's a gap that, is, uh, that is, is closable, you could say. And they just might need to take a few risks. They are right. It just seems a little bit more frantic than, uh, than the pace set by the, uh, the front runners. But that's because they are just a little bit closer to their limit. We look down the trail to the top three teams in contention for the stage win with Willier, with Willier Vittoria chasing madly behind. Haven't caught sight of where Orbia Elliott Speed Company is. George Egger and Lucas Baum, we expected big things from them. They had a slightly disappointing uh, prologue, two minutes, 48 seconds off the pace. And they were vowing to make good, vowing for revenge again today. And today is not their day, but uh, we'll be able to see at the time check exactly what their losses have been. But uh, Willia Vittoria Factory have every chance of getting back into that lead group. They'll pass through uh, the USN hydration zone here. No takers. But, uh, Sebastian Finney drifted quite close to the tables there. Maybe want to do... Uh, Stretch an arm out and just take something on the way, but uh, Nino's on a mission here. Well, that would be telling but if they did stop, it would allow the team of uh, Willier of Victoria to catch up. And the thing about the water points, it does create a bit of a concertina effect, but uh, no luck for the Italian pairing. But yeah, also if you just look on the map now, it's really like um, after that hydration um, point, it's just downhill back to the to the finish. And um, yeah, I mean, if you know, if it comes to sprinting, of course, Matt Beers, he has like uh, quite some punch, but it's about also his partner, um, Harold, Harold Grotz, uh, how he, um, mm. how he would he manage it. Well, Nino Schurter on the front here has gone uh, on the offensive, you feel. He's been riding fairly defensively for much of the day, but now he and Sebastian Finney are putting the hammer down. Uh, Wart Alaman, who's been much done much of the front riding today in uh, third place, and Hans Becking, who led them down uh, through the Asakai Bosch Trail in fourth place. But look at Nino sure to go. Unbelievable. Just uh, let the bike go, yeah. Absolutely sensational. There is no one like him. Not really. Yeah, really. I mean, he's he, here, yeah, he he's does. 
extraordinary things. Him, he himself, is, he said, like, he's, he's um, not like, specifically super good in one specific thing, but he's on a high level as a, as a whole. Mm. So his strength is in, in each, in, in, in if you go, if you see the, what, what a, um, a perfect mountain biker needs, he has like, goes in all direction. Yes. Like it has, a, has very good, good, good skills. He covers every base at a higher percentage than any other rider does across all of them. And uh, look at him, he's, uh, Sebastian Finney's dropped uh, significantly off it, not, not badly so, but that, that's uh, a mark of how strong this man is. Well, look at that gap already. We've seen a gap back to, uh, that's a gap back to Hans Becking. Hans Becking is slightly off the pace. He will need to pick it up and close that gap back to uh, the, uh, his partner, certainly so, um, Bart Allemann. Allemann is barely in touch with Sebastian Finney. And we'll be looking, I think it's uh, the hopes of, uh, of the, we spoke about earlier, the hopes of William Victoria Factory of catching back on. But with the, with the pace that Nino Schurter is setting, it looks unlikely at this point. Nino Schurter has flown. Searing pace and uh, yeah, it's uh, snapped any thought. I think that uh, William uh, Victoria had of, uh, of joining this group. He, he sensed, uh, I, I can maybe deal with these a couple of teams but another team in this mix is not going to be uh, what what uh, we want at the finish well we've still got over five kilometers to go we'll know when they hit the 5k to mark 5k mark because we have a time check there we'll be able to get exactly what that time gap is but we have uh, definitely there's someone that has thrown down the gauntlet for sure and that person is nino Schurter. credit to sebastian finney he is looking to get back in touch and we'll be soon seeing <laughs> What damage Nino Schurter has done to the field. Just seems like he also needed a bit of stretcher. <laughs> uh, but it's also, if, if you see uh, Nino, I mean, um, he spends also a lot of time in South Africa um, riding these conditions. You know, like it is different to riding in, in Europe um, with the loose gravel and, uh, and, and uh, Nino can also, like, can go with a high speed, can do these things. And Finney was also still like back in Denmark, mm. so that's also if uh, if you don't have the same time or like the sa same experience over the years, like how to actually deal with these kind of conditions, that that brings you gets you a bit on the back foot. Well, there's a problem here because Vart Alleman has clearly got the legs and the power. He's joined uh, Finney and Schurter. Becking is really having to bury himself to go to the front. And Alleman is now going to try and put himself on the front here and say, no, I'm going to try and uh, just ease this off a little and see if I can bring Hans Becking back. Yeah, clever move from the Belgian just to try and control the pace a little bit. Perhaps have a word with Nino Schurter or Sebastian <laughs> Fini just to try and distract him. <laughs> but I don't think Nino Schurter is distractible. It looks like Hans Becking is going to need to rely on the help of Matt Beers to help pace back to the front. That is, of course, is giving the Buff Megamo rider a free ride back to his partner. He just also hopes Where that, is Howard that, Grotz? that Howard Grotz is also with, exactly. with him. Oh, look comes, at yeah. them all coming back. Wow. What a race we've got on our hands here. It is the World Bicycle Relief. It is Buff Megamo and it is Toyota Specialized 91 all in the mix here as we get to the... Uh, the most exciting part of this stage, right towards the finish at Saronsburg. Really is enthralling. Becking, digging deep to uh, regain contact. And uh, Beer is doing all he can to get every ounce of effort out of uh, his partner, Howard Grotz, who's back on uh, at least uh, Beers' wheel and pulling him back to uh, the group here. And uh, perhaps uh, the three teams will be sprinting it out for the win very shortly. So, a race of uh, real drama unfolding here as they charge towards the finish. Uh, you know, all these riders have been racing uh, on uh, a high level at, demand, at cross countries and marathon uh, events around the world. Howard Grotz hasn't done a serious uh, mountain bike event since 2022, the American National Championships. And before then, since, uh, well, 2019 and then 2018 was his last full season on the uh, 
big mountain biking circuit. He has been doing a lot of racing on the gravel circuit. He did take time out of the sport completely to complete his studies. But uh, that's a mark of this man. He is uh, right there in uh, the heat of the battle here, sitting on uh, the wheel of Matt Beers, who's managed him superbly today, managed their the team dynamic very, very well indeed to be right in the mix at the, uh, the, the, the serious end of the race. And if you cast your mind back to stage one, Matt Beers and his partner, Christian, Christopher Blevins, had a very bad day and it lost uh, ship to, I think, almost over eight minutes. Mm. And uh, they'll be relieved that day one is done without incident. Even if they lose a few seconds here in the sprint finish, it means that they've achieved their goal of staying in touch with the race lead, with the overall general classification and still within, all within a minute of each other. So, World Bicycle Relief on the front. Nino Schertra and Sebastian Finney, the uh, race leaders in the GVT yellow jerseys, defending those uh, for all their worth today against the marauding buff Megamo team, spearheaded by the uh, power, skill and strength of uh, Wart Alleman, with uh, Hans Becking, the Dutch champion, on his wheel, and South African champion Matt Beers, guiding and cajoling his partner, Howard Grotz, uh, towards the finish. Under the uh, canopy they go. And we are very close to the finish here. Three and a half hours, uh, just over three and a half hours of racing. A little bit of single track just to add to the mix near the finish. Closing in on the finish of stage one of the Absa Cape Epic. And uh, Saronsburg is not far away. It's flat and fast now after the uh, trials and tribulations, the undulations and the trails of the day. Three hours and 32 minutes of Helter Skelter racing has boiled down to three teams on the front. The early aggressors were the buff Megamo team, Wout Allemann and uh, Hans Becking, trying to set a pace. They started the day one minute and 32 behind the World Bicycle Relief team and uh, they are with them now, but they'll be delighted will the World Bicycle Relief team of uh, Nino Schurter and uh, Sebastian Finney that uh, they haven't lost time to that pair. The specialized team are yo-yoing off this, uh, this lead group. That's the uh, top two teams in the uh, canopy of trees there. And uh, now, again, it's apparent that uh, Matt Beers and Howard Grotz have lost a bit of time again to them, having put in a huge effort to regain uh, uh, the place back in, uh, in the wheels there. Yeah, just a few seconds gap. It's, uh, it can seem like a lifetime, but it's testimony to the fact that uh, Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney are pushing the pace. The two yellow jerseys are on the front. They've been defensive all day, and now they're 100% pure aggression. And uh, we did see in stage one was actually won by uh, Wout Allemann in, when they headed into Hermanus. And... Uh, Maybe looking to do a repeat, but if he wants to repeat that, he's going to have to make sure his partner is back in touch with Nino Schota and Sebastian Finney. That's good time at 83 and a half kilometers. That was what it was there. So uh, nothing between the top three. In the women's race, they're on Funty's Pass at the moment. From a distance, it looked like there may have been uh, four teams, four riders in there. They're snaking now. They're looking over his shoulder. Nino Schota wanted to go early here with uh, Wart Allemann and Hans Becking on, his wheel, on their wheel, but they are off the pace just for now, very close to the finish. The yellow jerseys doing it justice today. Who's going to win this? Nearly difficult to, to bet against in Nino Schurter. They've certainly got the speed, and uh, Buff Megamo are traditionally marathoners. Wart Allemann won stage one into Hermanus, as we were talking about. He was riding with uh, Fabian Ravensteiner, incidentally, and ironically, now his new partner, Hans Becking, is more than up to the task. And uh, it'll all be about the tactics of the finish. We would say on paper that the cross-country riders, Nino Schurter, Sebastian Finney, are faster off the mark. They might be faster sprinters, but uh, it all depends on how the tactics play out as they head into the finish shoot. On the right-hand side, you can see uh, Candice Lill and Mona Mittevalda and the Ghost Factory racing team making their way up uh, the agonizing climb of Fanti's Pass. Uh, quite in stark contrast, it is the uh, pair of Sebastian Finney and Nino Schurter going absolutely flat out for the finish, which is just around the corner here at Saronsburg. It is uh, Finney on the front of Schurter. Just uh, following his wheel, looking over their shoulders. Alaman looks over his shoulder and sees Becking. Do they see 
the uh, they don't see the specialized team behind them because it's a media e-bike just behind them so that means that uh, the beers grotz combination have lost touch again and again a little uh, surge of speed pulls uh, finney and uh, Scherter away well if there's any any doubt at all ever about uh, Sebastian Finney's ability to match the to match the abilities in a mountain bike stage racing of Nino Schurter. These doubts have been put to rest now. Sebastian Finney is setting the pace, a cracking pace, and putting Wout Allemann and Hans Baking under big pressure. And not only them, the Toyota 91 Specialized team have already been gapped. So it uh, could well come down to a two-team sprint to the line here in Saronsburg. Which way is it going to go, Sabine? Yeah, I would almost think that uh, uh, Sebastian Finney and uh, Nino yeah. are taking to win. And Difficult yeah. to, to you know, go against them, isn't it? They've been so, so impressive. And uh, yeah, difficult to bet against that man, Nino Schurter. Also remember they've been uh, they've been a little bit defensive throughout the day. They haven't had to expend much energy. And Buff Megamo have been pushing the pace uh, just consistently whenever they can. And that does take it out of you. So they might be a little bit fresher and perhaps even have a but bit more speed. And it also seemed like that uh, Hans Becking now, uh, in a way, a bit to the end of the race, that he was the one who was always a bit dropping back. Suffering just a little. Hallemann clearly in uh, some seriously good shape at the moment, uh, Bart Hallemann. He's the third rider there in the European champion's jersey. And uh, just behind him, the Dutch champion is just ahead of us now, Hans Becking. Uh, Fantastic supporter of this event. So twisting and winding through these farm trails and roads. And there's no let off. Absolutely not at all. Becking again just trying to hang on to the uh, Willie Alleman is right in there. He wants to uh, make his presence felt. He's trying to get in between them. He is going to get in between them. Very clever riding. Now, if he can uh, stay there and Becking can go long, that is the tactic that they perhaps are going to employ here. We've seen it before. Alleman very, very smart in getting uh, himself ahead of uh, Sebastian Finney. They blocked, uh, almost blocked Finney here. Well, that's the that's the tactic that we saw from Christopher Blevins and uh, and Matt Beers. Matt Beers went up the road in Hermanus on the in the sprint finish, going into Hermanus, and uh, left it left. Um, Christopher Blevins to sprint start yep. with Nino Schota. And Nino Schota will be wise to that now. He'll know the tactics. And it's unlikely he'll be, uh, he'll be making the same mistake twice. And it's always wise also to just uh, to have a look for how the finish, uh, how, how actually you approach the finish line. So which corner or how many corners are coming yep. and where you also then just be on the right side. Here they go, charging towards the finish of stage one of the APSA Cape Epic. It's Sebastian Finney and Nino Schurter up against Hans Becking and uh, his partner, Bart Alleman. And it looks like Alleman and Becking are going to get the win. What a tactical masterpiece over the last couple of kilometers by Hans Becking and Bart Alleman to outwit the yellow jerseys and particularly Nino Schurter who is a past master at uh, tactics. What a clever piece of racing. Victory again for Bart Alleman on stage one of the APSA Cape Epic. But uh, the yellow jerseys will stay with uh, the uh, leader's World Bicycle Relief. And Matt Beers and his partner Howard Grotz roll home in third place. They have managed their losses very, very well indeed. And uh, they will be very satisfied with where they've gone. They're just 21 seconds uh, behind the Buff Megamo team who have taken the stage victory and uh, the William Vittoria factory team of Fabian Ravensteiner and uh, Samueli Poro take uh, fourth place after a grueling uh, first day. Stage one, three hours and uh, 39, uh, 38, 48, and uh, they finished 42 seconds uh, down. But what a clever piece of uh, cycling and racing from uh, Alleman and Becking. So very, very absolutely. good good move and very good tactically. We expected maybe some longhand tactics, but uh, it came down to a bit of firepower and a bit of positioning a combination of those two and the buff Megamo. And Bart Alleman makes it two out of two. He's won two stage ones in a row now. And he's brought along his new partner, Hans Becking. Fantastic performance from the Dutchman and the Belgian. 
Very, very clever racing uh, by Alaman and uh, Becking, getting in amongst uh, the uh, those those two. Oh, you'd think that uh, Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney would be a little bit disappointed by that. They would have def they're hungry for victory, hungry for for wins for sure, but they cannot be disappointed. They have defended that yellow jersey perfectly, finishing at the very front of the field, losing only two seconds to Buff Megamo, which it means they still have a two, one and a half minute advantage. But the big riders. The big losers of the day, you could say, are the speed company racing team, Egger and Baum. They lost over three minutes, or they were three minutes behind at the five kilometers to go checkpoint. And we'll be looking at that finish line just to see how much time they have shipped. Just looking back at that uh, time check, five kilometers to go. They were three minutes and 39 seconds behind. So we expect to see them in a couple of minutes. They are the next team on the road, Eger and Baum, looking to get revenge from last year's loss. And uh, they are certainly on the back foot today. We expected to see more from them, certainly in the prologue. And they had a disappointing time. And uh, they vowed to do better today. They are still, let's face it, in the top five on the teams that are finishing today. But they did expect to be right at the front. This is a team you cannot... Uh, discount at all they are super aggressive real real charges and uh, today they've had to uh, take a take a, a bit of a loss but you can bet they'll be uh, not holding back any day yeah they certainly are, are never ones to give up and never ones to shy away from a challenge they will keep attacking they'll keep being aggressive all week and any team that ignores them will do so at their peril Hager and Baum having won the 2022 event in dramatic style, the absolute underdogs, and uh, lost really last year due to a, a catastrophic mechanical, which they managed to repair really quickly, but uh, still lost them up to uh, about 11 minutes or so. And, uh, and, what, and it was on the second last day, wasn't mm. it? Yeah, exactly. Lawrence, but yeah, that was crucial for them. And uh, it just illustrates uh, you know, the luck here. They turn into the uh, finish at uh, Saronsburg. Lucas Baum and Gail Gega, they will finish the day in uh, fifth place today as they uh, charge towards the line. They've lost a bit of time, but uh, do not discount this uh, pair of German riders. They are unbelievably strong. Egger has been doing a lot of cross-country racing this year, and uh, he does still f focus on that fourth place. Beg your pardon, fifth place. Fifth place behind uh, William Victoria Factory, yeah. and they've lost four minutes. That's uh, to the yellow jerseys. So uh, they will be disappointed with that. They did uh, set the early pace on the uh, climbs up rakes and uh, the uh, climb up raptor rise, but uh, clearly a little bit too early that was for them. So this is a phenomenal ride by the team Honeycomb Pro Cycling Pair, Mark Pritson and Tristan Nokia. Nokia new to the team. Pritson is a former South African road race champion and a man who spent last year racing on the road but uh, he, they have put in a phenomenal performance here they turn into the finish and the first south african team first african team across the line in sixth place today mark pritson and uh, tristan norkia what a performance by this pair they're throwing their hat into the ring in the african jersey category because they have put time into the mbuko pair of mark uber and vessel and uh, philip uh, base and uh, Peter Dutoy, so they are really are in the mix. Well, at the last time check, five k's to go, they were over three minutes ahead of the Mbuko team, and with Pago Eurostil having a great early part of the stage, were nine minutes back off the main, off the front, of the leaders, about a minute and a half further beyond the team of uh, Mbuko. But we'll wait for the final time check, the final finish times, the official times will be posted in a few minutes be able to see exactly what the state of affairs is going into stage two. Simon Stubjan and uh, Jaka Hartmann of Singer Racing coming in in the seventh place. And this uh, another team who have lost time again today, the Canyon City pair of Andreas Seerwald and Mark Stutzman. They've crossed the line in uh, seventh place, but they've lost six minutes. So uh, the Swiss and German champions Maybe the day will get they will get uh, stronger and stronger. Now, charging towards the line is the uh, second of the uh, Canyon City pair, Martin Stosek and Peter Vakoc. 
to sign them. Scott Calabandina, I think Sergio Manchikon Gutierrez and Pavel Bernas, Polish champion. One final turn. You don't want to overcook this one. You could end in the bonnet of the car as they drive towards the line. Now it's the second rider across the line that counts for Canyon City. So they will. Well, depends what happens in the sprint, doesn't it? Did they get a... Uh, perhaps the Scott Calabandita got in uh, two riders just uh, ahead of Canyon City too. But very, very tight. Well, dramatic day in the men's race and out in the women's race. That is unfolding as they are making their way up uh, Fanti's Pass. We'll be uh, bringing them home as well in the next uh, 40 minutes or so. Sure. Yeah, the African uh, jersey leaders, the of African jersey leaders, Marco Hubert and Vessel Buerta. They had a torrid day, clearly. They want to defend that uh, jersey today, but have they lost it? We'll only know uh, in a few minutes' time. Nokia and Pritzen are the uh, pair who could uh, take those jerseys off them. They went into today's stage. In fact, I think they probably will take them from them as they come into the finish now. Vessel Buerta, the taller of the two on the front there, and uh, Marco Hubert. Buco, a the team, and they will cross the line uh, at the finish. And do they retain those uh, red jerseys? We'll wait and see. So the day started with the uh, yellow jerseys on the shoulders of Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney, World Bicycle Relief. Uh, 88 kilometers, 2,450 meters of climbing. And uh, behind them, in uh, second place, were the specialized uh, team of Beers and Grotz, and then Becking and Alleman, 132 back. So uh, just 90 seconds, really, between the top three. One minute and 45 between the top five. Charged away from the line at breakneck speed, and there, this is where there was a uh, little coming together, literally as they were leaving uh, the start precinct. Someone went down at high speed here. Well, it's not uh, a surprise. There, into the fence. Wow. That's the dust, isn't it? Yeah, and maybe also just. Um something was lying mm. and uh, didn't saw like a, a bit of rock up but it, it also really looked like from this perspective that it was like just just yeah went up and you and you definitely don't want to go the fence yeah. off the road and uh, down he goes so none of the it looked like none of the major contenders were caught up in that uh, it was uh, quite far back in this uh, batch but it does uh, ease things down so Aleman, all smiles and chatting uh, along to see and Steve John alongside him. But it was clear very early on that the uh, Arbea Leert Speed Company team wanted to do something today. And so it was like, yeah, Lucas Baumo was uh, always like a bit in the lead or trying in a way to, to pull him. Yeah. Their intention to try and put the pressure on and split this group up, make up the time they'd lost yesterday in the uh, time trial. And as a result, they set a cracking pace in this beautiful early morning light flying through the lowlands of the farmlands of uh, Tilbach here, just outside Tilbach at Saronsburg. And that injection of pace very quickly, and I suppose the crash as well, split the, split the uh, main group of 100 riders. There are 54 uh, of these UCI teams here. Split it up very, very quickly. High pace. The, the pace is just phenomenal. Uh, the, the, if you consider this is an eight-day stage race, it's like a cross-country race. Uh, but also maybe also just with having in mind how how hot it gets today yeah. so if you can still get it over with if you if you still <laughs> can f finish your day early or the, 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 the time on the bike then the better Tiger you are still trying to get in the mix here there's the jersey of the yellow jerseys of the leaders as well as Alleman and Becking but it was all about in the uh, moody dusty again that's what it's like if you were riding into that exactly if you now would just you know, imagine you were riding opposite direction like how dusty and uh, you don't see anything that's problems when mechanicals yeah. happen and in, with the dust and with uh, the high pace there are risks and the risks 
mean that there are mechanicals, but seem to be pretty easily dealt with, although incidents are not what the Mbuko team need. They had two incidents yesterday, despite their performance, but they seem to be back on track and back in the group at, early at this point. Yeah, but the effort that they had to put in uh, to get back does toll. take its toll, and uh, so that, that all uh, uh, multiplies and adds up for them. That's making a little bit of the pace, having to catch up. And, uh, and it's uh, Mark Britson. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and, Tristan Nokia. But even this early stage, it's a strung out, which is an indication of the pace. Another crash. Rider going down. Couldn't quite make out who that was, but uh, it gives you an indication. It was quite a frantic, frenetic start to the race. So how Grotz it was who went down there. Because it was Beers going back for him. Okay, so Grotz had a fall. Grotz so has had a busy day. It was yeah. his second fall. Yeah. So here... It is that pace by Orbea Speed Company. Well, they, they're they known for their dynamic, uh, swashbuckling way of riding and uh, throwing down the gauntlet. And Philip Bass and Peter de Toy trying to take the racing to the African leaders in Buka. Bass and de Toy of uh, Paga Eurostil. And uh, Buka and Paga Eurostil, in the end, as we know now, were overshadowed by a phenomenal ride by the uh, Honeycomb Pro Cycling uh, the Prince. So this is where things started to get interesting, uh, Sabine. Yeah, the uh, boat uh, Alaman actually increased the pace and uh, really like sprang, like, like, yeah, sprang this, this, uh, this bigger group. And uh, then it was like just uh, Nino Schurter and uh, Sebastian Finney who could stay with him or with them, with uh, him and Hans Becking. Close to uh, Nino Schurter, Becking uh, at the back of this little group. There's a surge of pace from uh, Hans, uh, uh, from Wart Alemann. You saw at this stage already that Toyota 91 Specialized were already in a little bit of trouble, um, although they were able to close the gap and get back in touch. And Willier Vittoria also having a good day out, very much in touch with the leaders. Now they're heading uh, onto the uh, Fantis Pass, which is the critical uh, area here because it soon saw the gaps appear here as uh, William Vittoria uh, were struggling, as were Specialized, Hargrotz and uh, Matthew Beers. And uh, it was there that uh, Becking and Alemann and uh, the uh, Schurter uh, Finney combination managed to get away. This is long after that, and the gaps were being closed by a massive effort from uh, Matt Beers, who dragged his partner, American Howard Grotz, back onto the uh, group here. Phenomenal effort. But uh, this pair of Ravensteiner and Poro, try as they might, couldn't uh, match the uh, specialized team's efforts and uh, rejoin the group. But they did everything they possibly could to try. But uh, I think. Uh, the World Bicycle Relief, Schurter and Finney were determined not to bring another team to uh, the final. They would know very well that having an extra team in the mix when it comes to a sprint makes things a lot more complicated. They prefer to just be able to manage the two teams up, uh, that were with them. And they managed, uh, they kept the Willier team at bay and also they managed to distance the Toyota 91 Specialized team. This is a tactical piece of riding here, right towards the finish line. Wart Alemann tucked himself in between Finney and uh, Schurter. Becking then joined them on the front there and created uh, an opportunity for Alemann to put his nose in front. Becking managed his effort. All he had to do was try and get ahead of uh, one of the uh, two men in yellow. And uh, the turn into the finish did just that. Wart Alemann and Hans Becking taking the win just ahead of Nino Schurter and his partner Sebastian Finney. Beers and Grotz in third.
So high drama today in the men's race and we will be catching up as soon as we possibly can. Getting signal is uh, a premium, I'm afraid, uh, today on these trails, the remote trails out in uh, Tulbach. Uh, getting consistent, clean coverage is uh, tricky. Bear with us, please. There are all sorts of issues that uh, are creating that difficulty. But this is the women's race. And there's still the two teams together here, Sabine, uh, the Canada Factory Racing and the Ghost Factory Racing team. Yeah, the group, uh, uh, Candice Little is actually leading here the group. Uh, Mona Mitterwallner sits uh, sitting behind her. And uh, then it's uh, the factory, the, the Ghost Factory Racing team um, in uh, second position. The Ghost Factory Racing Team arrived at the race in uh, Lawrenceford in their red jerseys, their red livery, the team, the Factory Racing Team. Now uh, they are in the leaders' orange jerseys, the Chevy leaders' jerseys, and the Terpstra and Nicole Collar. And the Canada Factory Racing at the 68 kilometer mark. And that was uh, just before they headed right up to the top section of the Fantis Pass. So at Berg Plus, 68 kilometers, they were riding with Ghost Factory, Cannondale Factory Racing, Ghost Factory Racing, and 44 seconds off the pace, Toyota Specialized 91, Villafana and Shepard managing their efforts, not quite able to manage the to manage the pace set by the top cross-country riders. And in the fourth spot at that uh, time check, two minutes 34 back, Vera Loza, Alexa Skada, Efficient Infinity, SCB SRAM team, and in fifth spot, hitting that uh, time check, the 68 kilometer mark, E Forge Private Client Holdings. The podium in, uh, of stage one at the 2024 Absa Cape Epic in third place, South African champion Matt Beers and Howard Grotz and uh, the Toyota Specialized team dug deep today. Grotz uh, had a crash, a couple of crashes and uh, suffered a little bit on the climbs. Beers brought him back. And in second place, World Bicycle Relief's uh, Nino Schurter and his Danish champion uh, partner, Sebastian Finney. And uh, onto the top step of the podium, the broad smiles of Team Buff Megamo. On the left, the Dutch champion, Hans Becking. On the right, the European champion, Wout Allemann. It's not often that Nino Schurter will stand on a podium and be one of only two of six not to have a national or a world champion's jersey on his uh, back, but uh, he's got them all in multiple numbers, but just not uh, right now. And amazing to see the same three teams on the podium as yesterday, just a complete swap of positions. Every, every one of those teams is standing on a different step this day, so it looks like that could be the week, could be the, the omen for the week. The teams that we see on that stage could be just swapping spaces, but there is to be a challenge certainly coming from the, the Willier Vittoria factory team who are showing very good form this year. Thank you. Laid out the race village here, the motor homes for those uh, riders and teams who prefer that than the uh, nice uh, canvas tents and the slightly smaller camping tents. All with the dining facilities here, the massage facilities, uh, the mechanics, everything, it's all uh, on here. Still in the yellow jerseys uh, of uh, the Chivit yellow jerseys of race leaders, Nino Schurter and his partner Sebastian Finney of World of Bicycle Relief, a team that was formed uh, because they ride for different trade teams, but Nino you know, wanted to ride and uh, they're putting something back to uh, a program that is doing an immense amount to get uh, people on bicycles around uh, the world. High fives uh, for Nino Schurter and uh, Sebastian Finney. Never mind, they didn't win the stage. I'll be delighted they're still in yellow going into tomorrow. A right, little uh, glance at uh, some of the uh, masters, and we've got uh, Masters men and women, grandmasters men and women, great grandmasters men and women mixed, as well as amateur men and women and the Xaro category. Plenty of uh, categories are being uh, raced all the way through, and it's highly competitive. Uh, these races uh, commit many, many hours uh, to the sport and to uh, preparation for this event, and uh, they're very, very competitive indeed, which is great to watch. Uh, uh, they bring their racing to the event and uh, they sustain so many events around uh, 
this country and around the world by uh, committing to come and uh, race it. And uh, this looks like it is Carl Platt and uh, Thomas Valeska, the leaders in the Masters. Well, Carl Platt with five uh, elite wins in the race is uh, well, a fairly decent Masters rider as well. He likes to collect those jerseys. Maybe he's <laughs> aiming for five Masters jerseys too. I guess, uh, but he also had, had um, I think he also did uh, all the epics, but just couldn't finish because of if it was like uh, Tubby Buck or like got sick or, yeah, so it's, uh, but he also has a lot of epics under his belt. Absolutely. And uh, here he goes, uh, Carl Platt, a wonderful friend of uh, South Africa, loves coming out here and uh, riding as much as he possibly can here. And clearly still in very, very good shape. Start of the day with a four-minute lead over Craig Uriah and Mike Posthumus, a pair who have won the Masters in the past. And another pair of working-class heroes, if you like. Uh, Craig, a chiropractor, and Mike, uh, a uh, very, very well-known uh, coach who uh, gives so much to uh, teams and riders around, uh, around the world, it might be said. Right, we are on the... In the Lasse Chaibosch uh, section, after Fanti's pass, this is, and this is the leading women. It's it, still Candice who is uh, making the pace. So, the orange le leaders here will be uh, fairly satisfied. They're a minute and five seconds ahead of Candice Lil and Mona Mittedvala going into today's stage. So, if it stays like this, they'll be happy they, they retain that jersey. Yeah, definitely. Also, I'm um, to in a way just maintain and to stay w with the two, um, um, with with Candice Lilla and Mona Mitterwalner, um, because I mean it's it's a comfortable situation and um, yeah, I guess also when you don't know what the what the coming week or the next day still brings, so it's better in a way to pace yourself and uh, yeah. Yep. The, just, the just, just stick or just stay with uh, the two in in the front. Yeah, Candice is the most experienced uh, Absecape Epic rider in this quartet. With the other three not having ridden it before, so she knows above all what it's like. Yeah, so they, we we got a nice name here at, yeah. a, at the Cape Epic yeah. with the with the newbie name. Uh, so it's uh, yes. and uh, Candice she has uh, six or seven uh, Cape Epics uh, uh, already. Yeah, this is so her seventh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Started her first one was 2017, and uh, since uh, finishing fourth in 2018, she has finished second, 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 and second. So uh, this is a uh, very important year for her. She'd like to break that trend upwards rather than uh, anywhere else. And uh, she's going about it the right way here. Very experienced, Mona Mitabella, the 22-year-old. Uh, she's still very, very young, and uh, we've seen young riders win this race before, um, the likes of Sina Fry and uh, Laura, Laura Stiger. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, which, which also was, was actually also surprising yeah. how well we actually mm. managed to sustain in over the over the week. Especially since it was two young riders, because mm. before we saw Kate Courtney who rode with Annika Langfar, she had a good mentor, clearly who'd won several times before. But uh, two young riders, having said that, they had the mentorship of the specialized team, which does help a lot. It is, it's a surprising, because the athletes still have to ride the course, but that, it, that backup service does. But also if you're out on the course, like on, just in a way, if you, yeah, if you have an older experienced rider, then it's still like on the course, mm -hmm. then you in a way like, you look after your partner and you give advices. But if you, to young one, uh, young guns, then it's also like, yeah. you don't also know exactly um, how and where to push or how, then maybe to just, take back a little yeah. bit. Well, uh, Candice Lilla is providing that uh, for Mona Mitterwald. And I suppose, although she doesn't have the epic experience, and Terps are for Nicole Kohler a little as well. But uh, these uh, four are going very, very solidly up here. So Lil uh, Mitterwald may well go to the Olympics as well, uh, possibly. I would think, yeah. She will, yeah. Terpster will. And possibly Cola. That's a very deep, deep team in, in uh, Switzerland it's to so get into. Very difficult. 
probably not. not yeah. So it's just that uh, Switzerland has so many yeah. good uh, female and, and male riders, and you just have two spot two spots uh, per nation. Ma that's the maximum. Um, so uh, it's very unlikely that uh, Nicole Koller would be at Olympics. Yeah, they did clean sweep in, in Tokyo, uh, Switzerland. So yeah, they are um, pretty and special. And that won't happen anymore yeah. because you, at that uh, time it was like that you had uh, the top teams they had uh, the possibility to send three riders three. and that now it's a maximum of two. two. But so d on that point, um, they're riding this. Would, would you, I mean, if you were, would you have ridden the, the Absa Cape Epic when the, the Olympics was your one of your big goals later in the year? Um, I did it 2016, yeah, and uh, it was uh, um, so for me also like the previous or the, the years before there was always the situation that um, it was almost a bit too close between the, f the end of the Absa or the, the Cape Epic, the Absa Cape Epic and the first World Cup mm. and you still need a bit of time to just digest this massive stage race and then you need to prepare with quite specific um, and, and high intensity intervals, yes. short but really short uh, um, um, uh, punchy training to prepare for the, for the cross country season and 2016 actually like the way how it looked like finish off the Cape Epic and, and then when the first with the first World Cup just in May gave me actually enough time period uh, to prepare nicely also for the World Cup. And so it worked for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go in the Olympics? Not so good. <laughs> I had, um, I had a, a crash of fall just two weeks before uh, which, uh, which just uh, didn't, didn't allow yeah. me actually to perform. Okay. Yeah. So it is. It's all part of uh, your years planning and uh, getting it all in place. And, and, and pr what, uh, with what's priority? With the Olympics, actually, not just the one year, because yeah. like it's uh, the build-up uh, mm. starts already earlier. Candice Lil and uh, Mona Mitevala. Lil is doing all the work she has been for kilometer after kilometer, and behind her, and Terpstra and. Uh, Nicole Cole on these beautiful trails as they ride high in the mountains. Not so high now, they've come down off Fanti's Pass and they are going to be very shortly dropping down off the Asakai Bosch Trail and towards the finish, which is fast and furious as we've seen with the men. It doesn't take them long to uh, bring it home at uh, Saronsburg and uh, Lil and Mitevalda. Well, she started the day, Mona Mitevalda, she suffered from heat uh, yesterday, from the heat she said to before the race that she uh, before this morning's race, that yesterday she was really boiling hot when she got to the top of the uh, climb, the young Bafana climb, and then going down she had the shivers and it was cold, which is, a, is an indication of some sort of heat stroke. So uh, she was this morning a little bit cautious about how she might go today, but uh, it looks like she's been well managed by Candice Lil and uh, they've managed the pace well and she's looking strong. It was just a uh I mean, um, lady start was uh, five minutes past seven, so definitely also having the, this this colder start um, was was also welcome for her. And now in uh, South Africa, here, ten past eleven, and uh, the heat of the day probably only uh, in a couple of hours' time. And uh, never mind uh, the amateur riders; it's was well, twenty-nine degrees now. They're in their bouts. Uh, Probably peaking a little later on today at around uh, 30, 33, 34. Um, but in the mountains there, where there is no wind, that temperature feels a lot warmer than that. So hydration and uh, taking on uh, food and uh, nutrition is critical to your success today. Yeah, also especially if you're a bit if within the bush, like it, mm. it's just it, 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 uh, the heat is trapped, like it, and you're just. You just ride through this uh, oven. Ball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On the uh, trails they go. Knowledge, local knowledge, knowledge uh, Candace Lil. Um, it's unlikely that either these uh, three or any of the other three riders have ridden uh, here before, but Candace uh, certainly has. This, uh, this is the corner there that, to yeah. for that uh, um, Robin Steiner and uh, Paul yes. like missed that corner. Yeah. Yeah. 
lying down now. This is the last little section that they'll have a well, sink into, More in, into the flat mm. when it comes to the open area. So we saw some very clever tactics in the men's uh, sprint winning a stage. It's uh, certainly an honor and a prestigious thing to win a stage at the Absa Cape Epic. Every rider will want to try and do that, that's for sure. Uh, you recall winning your first stage uh, with Jana. Was it with Jana Benamoyne? Yeah. Also, I, also I, I, I want to say in, in, in Boschendal, would that have been right or was it before then? So 2016, we so it was like also the first stage, um, Jana went very hard. Mm -hmm. So and um, when, when she, I mean, we had uh, that that's time, I think it was over 100 Ks on, on the first stage. And uh, after 60 kilometers, she was just done. Oh. And when we just had, in a way, I had to get her back to the finish, and we had to just recover cool, and cool her down. Reset. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, she did then to the end of the epic. She did very well, also because it, it got a bit colder. We went also over Bain's Cliff, and then the next days, um, uh, the temperature had a bit some rain, and, and definitely mm -hmm. like the cooler temperature that helped her Excuse to me, yeah. to recover and uh, to perform. You won three in a row, I think. There, I think uh, something like that. Could could be. Yeah. <laughs> You should remember these things, you know, oh, Sabine. No. <laughs> Let's now catch up I'm, with... I'm, I'm not for the statistics. No, no. <laughs> yes, yes, that's Guru next us will tell us. So uh, they go past, the leading women past the USN hydration station, which tells you now that they are within eight kilometers of the finish. A quick word, though, from our elite men's uh, winners today. Let's hear from them. A win, the first stage, and a win yesterday, a podium. Hans, I have uh, watching the race uh, live uh, at the Absa boot. You did a lot of work. Well, I think only there when the camera was there, because I hang on for my life for a while. But yeah, we felt good. I knew the stage from 2021. I informed Wout about it, that the last climb on the Fantis Pass would be really hard. And again, we were in the front at the right moments, feeling really good from the start. And yeah, to top it off with a victory, it's been two amazing days. and. Like I said yesterday, the momentum, we, we want to keep it and even go farther for the next six days. If, if I watch the TV, there are so many tactics involved. Single tracks, wide open roads, you have to be in a position all the time. How does it go? How, how is it from the start on? Yeah, it's just key to stay concentrated and to always try to stay in the front. And uh, yeah, I think today we managed it really well and that was the key to success today. But it went fast from the beginning. There was no moment of rest. Thanks to Speed Company, I don't know what their tactic was, but they hurt everybody from the start and they had a nice ride till, till the first big climbs. And then we could do our things. I know for me, I'm a bit older, I need some time to get in the rhythm and after two hours everything is fine for me. So I'm super happy to be in the front there and I said to Wout, today is going to be a good day, but the win was even more than expected. Hans, for you this is the fourth stage win. Uh, Wout, for you the third stage win, the first stage win together. How does it feel in general? Amazing, and, and the good part is he cannot pass me with stage wins because we're riding together. <laughs> so at least he have to go. He have to come back one year to beat me. <laughs> Congratulations again, and enjoy it, and uh, good luck for the rest of the week. Thanks. Thank you. World bicycle relief, Nino Schurter, Sebastian Finney. What happened? Oh yeah, what happened? We finished second. We had a good race. I think uh, we stayed all day together. We really tried to uh, just do our own pace, sit in the group, not uh, waste too much energy. Still a long race. Um, so yeah, the German speed company, they were quite eager to uh, to make it, make it really hard from the beginning. And, and I think we just uh, tried to stay there, sit on the wheel a bit. And then in the last uh, climbs, it uh, got quite selective and, and we were still there together with uh, Buff Megamo. So, yeah, and then we, we finished second, so it was good. Nina, when I see you riding and pushing in the descents, pushing so hard on these single tracks, it looks amazing, so fast cornering, you, you drop everyone. What's the feeling if you're coming so close to the finish? <laughs> yeah, that's the fun part, when it goes downhill. Or <laughs> yeah, it was a tough stage, and for, for sure it's nice. Uh, yeah, when you get close to the finish, and uh, we saw then uh, we can squeeze out maybe a few seconds out of Specialized, so we went a bit harder in the last downhill and tried those last single tries to, to go as fast as possible. And uh, yeah, it was, it was nice, uh, nice finish, but uh, yeah, it was a tough day. Also, the last climb uh, started to get quite hot, <laughs> so it uh, was tough, yeah. And how was it this morning with all the dust? I, I saw the peloton, the start, 
immediately so, so fast and so I felt dangerous to me because it's hard to see anything. Yeah, I, I don't think it was dangerous, but for sure at some points uh, in the single tracks it was hard to see the all the rocks and, and actually the trail. Uh, but but yeah, I think further back in the peloton it's a different story. I think we were lucky at the beginning it was like a lot of the, the sun from behind yeah. and not from the front, so it wasn't too bad today. Tomorrow maybe it could be different if you go first in the other direction towards the sun, it could be different. <laughs> you have the next stage already in mind? Yeah, for sure, the next stage uh, goes over a big big mountain there so <laughs> another day in the leaders jersey enjoy tomorrow and good luck thank you so much howard god matt beers matt you came back to the leaders when you were dropped a little bit in the last time was it like that uh yeah we um i think howard said that we should just set our own pace and it was actually a really good plan because yeah they were like maybe going a little bit too hard but then yeah we just rode back and um I like it because how he knows he's got a bit of a bit of sense, whereas I will just go and then just explode. <laughs> so it's been nice to have someone that has a better feel. That's really important also for the rest of the week. But how how was it in the beginning? It must be quite hectic to find your positions uh, when the group is that tied together. Yeah, every, everyone is here to to win. You know that that first single track, they're they're gonna win it, uh, and. We paid paid a little bit, but you know, came back. It was tough, and it seems like that'll be the tone for the rest of the race. <laughs> At least you did a very good job. Uh, another podium finish. Uh, what's what's for the rest of the week? What's in your mind for tomorrow's stage? The tactics. Yeah, uh, obviously tomorrow we did in 2016. So a few a few of the riders who are the old the old guys like me and <laughs> we'll know that stage and. Um, it's a tough one, so um, it's going to be a big fight, and it's going to be a yeah. Next two stages are going to be proper. Is this something what you discuss uh, after the race and in the preparation tomorrow as well together? Yeah, yeah, we definitely look at, look at the next stage, and we have you know a, a lot of people with experience on the trails here, so it's it's really helpful. Good luck for tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, insight and thought from our top three in the men's race. Meanwhile, the uh, women's race is boiling up now. A uh, two-team uh, tussle for stage honours today. With around five kilometres to go, and it's flat and fast towards the finish here. Mona Mittenwall, a second wheel to Candice Lill, who spent a long time on the front there. And uh, behind them, well, just biding their time and very comfortable looking at uh, Anne Terpstra and Nicole Kohler at the moment. They're looking very good. Yeah, I guess also Candice is aware that uh, uh, under these circumstances, she won't really make a breakaway. So um, she's just riding also a nice pace, but also which doesn't hurt her too much. Um, I almost could think that they have maybe also a little bit of slight tailwind. Um, so because it's like, it's, yeah, no one of them is like really going a bit in an arrow position. So it's like more, um, yeah, be riding together and see how then the, the, the final 200, 300 meters to the to the finish line will be. Um, uh, of course, I say I would say with um, the Ghost Factory team sitting in the back, they could maybe then also make a good move uh, and uh, sprinting um, over to uh, Mona and uh, and um, Candice. Yeah, there's, a, there's that fascinating dynamic that goes on now where the teams are just, uh, just I don't want to say cruising, but they're going along without any real intent to, uh, to, to get away, and then suddenly that'll change. Is it going to change now? Well, Candice Lil and uh, Mona Mittenwald are perhaps wanting to. I mean, there's an opportunity if they can get away. Put a few seconds. You heard... Um, Schurter and uh, Finney talk about putting a few, you know, a couple of seconds into uh, the specialized team. Uh, you know, this is what they maybe will try, but it's uh, difficult to dislodge the, will buy the Ghost uh, Factory team. They're looking so, so comfortable. I think they've still got to reach, uh, not I think, in fact, I know they have still have to reach the uh, five kilometer to go mark. 
And you can see we have a very good visual of these two teams that they are in contention. These are the two leading teams. What we don't know yet is how far back the Toyota Specialized 91 team is. But no doubt we'll get that information as soon as it comes in. We'll be feeding it straight back to you. And in fourth, fourth spot on the trails today, the team of uh, Lexus Garda and Vera Laws, the defending champion. They look like they are losing more time, more minutes today. And a bit of drama there. Oh, Candice Hill's missed a turning. Yep, there's the turn. And Damona Mittenwald are doing very well in that little block where the, the, the rocks were there, just ensuring that uh, she couldn't let uh, Nicole Kohler go through and giving Candice Hill a chance to backtrack and get back on the trail. That can happen. Very easily. It, yeah, it can happen. And, but I was also a bit like in this situation, um, like, yeah, like a, an agreement that you now wouldn't. There's a truce. But that, that yes. just in a way you wouldn't now try to uh, take advantage of, of that situation. So they're in the canopy of trees now. And uh, yes, there's still a, a bit of a truce and a bit of a, a, uh, a lull in the, uh, the racing. But it may well come alive as we saw with the men's race. Well, the the team that are uh, the two teams that we see in front of us right now they will they'll most likely want to put more time to take more time off the specialized team they are of course the 20 it does contain the 2022 winner and that's uh, no mean feat to win this race so they know what it takes they know what uh, what it means to put more time and when they can because uh, when the tables are turned the uh, the, uh, any of these teams will be on the back foot. They'll wish that they took as many seconds as they possibly could when they had the chance. The teams are split now as, as a result of that little uh, directional uh, challenge for Lil. So it's uh, Terpstra on the front, then Mittevalda, then uh, Kohler, and then uh, Lil at the back. And uh, that, that's where it'll stay until they get out of this uh, single track uh, very shortly along this riverbed. Beautiful trail weaving its way through this bush like a bush tunnel absolutely beautiful okay just highlighting how amazing these trails have been and uh, that's what uh, it has been uh, i think the, the hallmark of the memory of from this race come the end of the week will be of uh, the amazing trails that have, uh, these riders have enjoyed we have certainly had a fill of it today and more to come throughout the week and uh they have already the team of Cannondale Factory Racing and Ghost Factory Racing, the two teams in the lead on the trail at the moment. They have come through that uh, five kilometer to go section and we wait with bated breath just to see how much time the Toyota Specialized 91 team have shipped. Yes, Alexis Scarder and, uh, beg your pardon, uh, Sofia Gomez, Viafan and Samara Shepard the uh, specialized team started the day one minute and 11 seconds down on uh, ghost with Cannondale's uh, t gap to the leaders one minute and five seconds anything you can eat on any couple of seconds you can get back uh, even even though it's an eight-day race and uh, there's so much uh, opportunity well there isn't really that much opportunity at this shop um you normally would you know like if it's if you see it also a bit from a from an energy saving perspective um you would try in a way to make time on a climb where you also where, you, where others also have to put in an effort if uh, they get a free ride and you just yeah. pull them then it's like you have to uh, definitely put in more power more energy and others are just like yeah rolling behind you so you have to also hurt the other ones if you want to make yeah. a move. He or she who hurts least wins and uh, or prevails. Now, this is a nice little dynamic going along here. Mittenwalder and uh, Terpstra alongside uh, each other. And uh, Lil trying to get in there. She has managed to get in behind uh, Terpstra. Starting to wind up now. They close in on the, uh, the finish. Lil now moves to the front. Yeah, so if you see tomorrow's stage, um, I mean the wagon trail climb, that's actually because it's a single trail. And if you, um, if you good technically, or a good technical rider, good technically team, then you, in a way, you need to make the move and have to make sure that you, in the, that you actually get into that climb first because you can't really overtake in, yep. in that situation. 
that's a very long climb up the mountain. Two kilometers to go, you saw from that board, very well picked up uh, from uh, the uh, helicopter by our cameraman Barrett, and he's uh, given us an idea. So now it is uh, into the last uh, kilometer and a half. Candace Lil and Mona Mitterwell are now back on the front. Well, let's talk about that sprint. What do you think? Who do you think? What do you think, uh, Sabine? As a sprint, if, if it comes to the sprint qualities, I would uh, think that uh, the Ghost Factory team, that both have to put the sprint qualities. And they've been fresh. They've, they've been defensive all day. They haven't yeah. spent a lot of time at the front. They've pushed the pace a little bit on occasion, but uh, the uh, protagonists of the day have certainly been the Cannondale Factory Racing Team. It's hard to see, it's hard to say, but uh, it all could come down to positioning going into that final quarter. It does happen rather quickly. Well, and uh, but it's it's really it's it that's the thing about a sprint finish it, it sometimes can just be a lottery not necessarily always down to firepower and in two person race i mean it's uh, that that's the key you know, if it was a individual race very different uh, you would back nino Schurter to win any time of, of the day in a sprint like that but um, this is very different. It's all about where the second rider is positioned in the, uh, the finish. Yeah, and it's like you have a uh, left right turn both 90 degrees and it's it's actually quite open. But the, the second rider, team rider, has has also to make sure that um, does it, that doesn't get blocked. That you just in a way can also that really that you can uh, ride your pace and that you can take all the momentum around the corners. Lost our picture there, but I can tell you that where Jesse Nixon, you see on the graphic there, that uh, graphic of Bulls Mini e-bike uh, token, that is where the leaders are. So very, very close to the finish. She's following the uh, top women as they head along the Klein Bergrafie, the small Berg River. This is a time check at the 83.5 kilometer, five k's to go. Uh, we saw the Canada Factory Racing and Ghost Factory Racing heading through the 2K to go, but just having gone through 5K to go se uh, section, time sector is Toyota Specialized 91. Villafana and Shepard have lost five minutes so far on the trails. It's a perceptible lapping of the tempo in this uh, group of four as they start gearing up for the finish. On the left now, we see also that uh, Nicole Koller definitely tries in a way also to make now to increase the pace and uh, to get a good position around the corners. Then it goes into first left corner on the grass and then the, the final right corner on the on the stretch to the to the finish line. Well, we saw some clever tactics by Wart Allemann and Hans Becking in the uh, men's battle for the sprint. This is a uh, a similar scenario here, and Terpstra digging deep there. Mit uh, Mittenwald on her right-hand side, and that world champion's rainbow stripe jersey doesn't it look magnificent? And uh, here, uh, Candace Lil on the outside of this little turn. It's turning into a bit of a drag race yeah. on these open roads. Yeah, so Mona, she um, also, if you see cross-country races, like you can we come to the corners. In they go. Just the final. Into the final, it is uh, the Ghost Factory Racing Team, and they look as though they've got this. Mona Mittenwalner is uh, going to be uh, battling to uh, keep pace. It is a second win for the Ghost Factory Racing pair, and Terpstra and uh, Nicole Kohler have consolidated their position in those orange uh, Chiavita leaders' jerseys by taking stage one victory here in Saronsburg in the 20th edition of the Absa Cape Epic. Four hours, 26 uh, the uh, time, and uh, a very, very uh, good result for Terpstra and uh, Kohler. They've done, the, done the exactly what they would have wanted to do today, defended their jerseys, and uh, Mittevalna and uh, Lil did all the work, did a lot of work, uh, as they would have done uh, as the team position second overall but they haven't lost too much time in fact if they haven't lost any time one minute and five seconds so is what the gap will be well the uh, the idea is that they've um, they, they're chalking one thing off at a time they've chalked off the fact that they needed to put time into their rivals toyota specialized 91 and that is the job done they have yet now the next task is to see if they can put the ghost factory racing team under pressure About to hear from uh, Candice Lil and uh, Mona Mitavala. 
unfortunately we're not able to hear from them right now but uh, as soon as we can we'll bring you uh, audio of uh, those finishes so second stage win for ghost factory racing two out of two in their debut race they uh, are going about it in very impressive fashion couldn't ask for anything better from their perspective for the specialized uh, 91 team things are not going quite as they would have liked it here to specialize 91 team sophia gomez via fun and samara shepherd five minutes they were down and uh, vera Lossa and alexis scada seven minutes down at that final checkpoint so they are going to have a lot of work to do to get uh, back in the mix here and to challenge for the overall title well, they lost a significant amount of time between the 68 kilometer mark and the uh, 83 kilometer mark um, only 44 seconds back at 68 kilometers and we've seen they've already shipped already five minutes and they have yet to, to arrive at the finish we expect to see them very soon but uh, something might have happened we'll be able to catch up with the riders on the finish line and understand exactly what happened between that time it, it was that was one small aspect that uh, that we might not uh, account for is Fanti's pass, yes. <laughs> which uh, we saw some of the around, many of the riders well, losing touch with the leading with the leading groups, and that could have that could have been it. Well, earlier on, going up uh, the uh, towards the Clip Revere uh, climb uh, to descent, we saw uh, Sofia Gomez Vufan slide back to join Samara Shepherd, so she was suffering on that early climb as well. So it is likely that the, they may well have lost uh, the bulk of that time going up. Fanti's Pass, the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team. Snaking in towards the finish on these uh, trails, of course, riders will be doing so for hour upon hour still as they come to the uh, finish. So uh, over five minutes down uh, the Toyota Specialized pair. I think uh, this might well be them actually. In the front, yeah. Yes, two riders just in, in front. front. Very fun. And then uh, Samara Shepard on her wheel. Fun uh, has been uh, very, very successful on the gravel series uh, circuit in the United States, which is massively popular and has become quite lucrative for the very top riders. And uh, she's uh, she dominated the series last year, winning uh, four or five of the uh, six, uh, seven races. So she won that series. Um, and uh, yes, it takes in some of the toughest uh, gravel races and some of the mountain bike races as well. And, uh, the other team behind could be Lena Giraud and uh, Hayley Preen because um, Alexis uh, Scala would actually be in the in the, in the, um, in the Stars and Stripes in the American national jersey, champion jersey. It looks like, you know, at this stage, uh, Efficient Infinity going through that 83, just updating on that uh, time check that uh, Vera and Alexis were just over two minutes behind uh, Sophia and Samara. That's probably a men's uh, team, the back end of one of the earlier groups. So here they come to the finish, Sophia Gomez Villafan and uh, Samara Shepard, the uh, Oceana champion from New Zealand. They're going to cross the line and take third place on stage one in the Amarex women's race. Well done, uh, this pair. Hard day, but they managed their efforts well. And uh, into third place, which they will retain overall as well. So, uh, just it, it, again, Samara Shepard's the debutante here. She's getting the feel of the Apsa Cape Epic and. Uh, first big marathon stage after what was a not in not not uh, an easy prologue yesterday uh, it takes a while the, the, in a way the shock value of uh, the prologue and then stage one the short sharp blast around those trails for just over an hour and then this big marathon stage a day later this you cannot underestimate the shock value of that yeah definitely and, and also if you just uh, then still consider that there was like um, also the transfer to get from yeah. Lawrenceford here to uh, Sarensburg, which also take a bit some uh, recovery away from the riders. Absolutely, the chance to uh, recover. They've uh, and they would have finished. Unlike uh, it's the only day of the entire race uh, where the uh, elite and the fastest riders finished latest in the day, um, and then uh, come here the early riders. Some of them finished by. Uh, nine o'clock were um, 
still having breakfast and then lunch and a rest and a sleep, and uh, they had plenty of time to recover. From now on, though, the uh, boot is on the other foot because uh, the amateur riders further back would have started an hour and a half behind these uh, riders, the very back of the field. And uh, that's uh, a serious, serious challenge for those riders. And, uh, well, the, the last riders to roll off the start line are the two hyenas who will do the sweeping as they go along uh, to the, uh, through the route. Uh, there are various points at which there will be uh, maximum times allowed, and if uh, riders reach those points outside of that time, they will uh, be uh, told their race is no longer, their stage is no longer uh, to be completed. Um, and uh, the uh, hyenas, as they are known, will sit just on the back of that, on that time, on that cusp of that time, all the while, doing nothing other than just sitting back and uh, monitoring the back of the field. Yeah, they're characterized by their hyena jerseys, the Chivita jerseys, uh, the hyena pattern on them. And uh, they're a very important part of the race because of the access, not all of the vehicles. Let's go chance. to the uh, bigger part. Let's hear from the winners. Go our pace in the first two uphills. Then we try to to hang on to Kendale, and uh, I think in the last time we we got a little bit of a gap, but could close it again in the downhill. And, but uh, yeah, pretty pretty exciting racing. Is it more difficult, Anna, when you start in the leader's jersey? Um, well, it for sure changes your plan a little bit, to be honest. Uh, of course. Most people watch us now and I felt especially specialized was afraid we would get away in the downhill maybe because they always try to, to block us a little bit um, but uh, in the end I think this can give us confidence I mean it's cool to wear the leader's jersey I think everybody wants to have it so uh, we can just be happy that we're wearing it at the moment it was a feature what I saw I mean more than four hours uh, four hours 25 almost was it that hard from the beginning or it was more hard at the end yeah it was for sure like the the last uphill Fenty's uphill it was like really hard and also hot <laughs> not my favorite <laughs> but uh, yeah the beginning was what was in the pack and controlled and yeah I think it made it easier to get there a little bit fresher wanna tell us a bit about the dust I mean What's your vision if you're riding on the trails with riders in front of you, and, and especially in the morning with the sunrise? It's horrible. You don't really see anything. Um, we practiced it a lot, and if you're a bit just two, like the first one sees good, the second one sees actually, yeah, I don't. I would say not even 50% anymore. And then if you're the third or the fourth, you can only guess like where you should go. So you really have to navigate and hope the rider in front of you goes right and there's nothing hidden there in the dust because that's the problem if there would be a stone or something that surprises you it's, it's quite dangerous so my strategy until now is to try to stay very close to the wheel and then hope that the dust is not that bad yet but it's not easy no congrats again tomorrow another stage have a good recovery and good luck for tomorrow thank you congrats and thank you ladies thank you in Interesting uh, uh, hearing the, the thoughts from the two very animated, lovely to uh, uh, Anna Terpstra and uh, Nicole Kohler talk about their, their day out there today. Uh, we've talked a lot about the dust, but firsthand from them, that's what it's like. Reflection on uh, the women's race today as they rolled away from the start just three minutes after the elite men in their own uh, specific racing batch, which has made a huge difference. Did you ever race in when it wasn't a, a specific women's batch? Um, no, so, so 2006 what is, was the first year where they when did the, when drive the their own batch, yes. We had own, our own start, yeah. Which is the way it uh, has been and should be, and uh, very, very important as well. So Mara Shepard uh, reflecting, you can see a bit of tension in the face there. Candler still taking the drink, settling into the day. Mona yep. Mitevala had a difficult day yesterday, just uh, easing into the pace here. And it wasn't long before the group started to stretch out as under the pace of Canada Factory Racing and uh, the Ghost Factory Racing team headed out. Beautiful conditions for them early on, but uh, you heard the dust does play a role and you want to be uh, very, very vigilant and perhaps at, as close to the front as you can as you can be, if not right on the front. Yeah, and it's really like just the rising, like 
just when the star when the sun starts to rise this very low angle which is like was just, just terrible and uh, Nino mentioned those for tomorrow um, we could be maybe lucky that before we actually get to the wagon trail that the sun is still uh, yeah. behind covered uh, by the uh, behind the mountains yeah yes this is 10 k's and they're into it so the, so they may well the sun may well still be behind the Witzenberg mountains as they uh, yeah they go in there as the road started to go uphill so that group started to thin out Lil and uh, Mitteval over there on the front Terpstra and uh, as well as Sophia Gomez Viafan who was keen to get in the racing here but uh, she had to be mindful of her partner Samara Shepard who uh, then dragged herself onto the back of that uh, group and uh, slowly but surely the main protagonists uh, emerged to the front of this uh, race. Were Ghost Factory Racing, Specialized uh, 91, and uh, the Canada Factory Racing team. And in the men's race, while there was a lot of uh, jostling and uh, uh, for position and uh, some aggressive work done by the uh, German pairing, the Elliott uh, Speed Company Racing, in the women's it was much more of a slow burn and a kind of a rollout, you could say, as the pace just just rolled up and up and up and up, and eventually there were casualties just came off the back of that. Uh, at a pace set by Candice Lil and uh, one of Mitterwalder and of course the leaders in the leaders Chevita leaders jerseys, the uh, team of Ghost Factory Racing behind Natalia Fisher right now on board with the Bulls Media e-bike. Just a vote, just uncleating there to go around these uh, bends, some of the trails quite loose, but uh, really just uh, a fantastic uh, exhibition of uh, the trails here in uh, Tilbach today. As, uh, yeah, the, the orange leaders did do some work early on, that's for sure. Got themselves uh, out front early and then uh, began the uh, climbs on the front. Four teams there and the, uh, the Aramex uh, women's category uh, leaders starting to take uh, shape here in this uh, early part of the stage. You can see it's still quite early due to the, uh, the shadows. And so but it's staying out the way, which is uh, a good thing there. Making sure the trail is clear for the teams here. Now, this is where you can see uh, Sofia Gomez trying to get into the single track, and Terpstra did make mention of that in her interview. This was into the Toyota Tough section because they know the danger of this ghost team uh, on the descents. And just their technical skills just will give them a little bit of, uh, just a few seconds here and there, and uh, just half a second per corner it all adds up and then they can create a gap and perhaps uh, just roll off the bottom section and letting the others, uh, putting the others under a bit of pressure to chase and causing split in the field. And any pressure means that uh, someone at some point is going to crack and eventually or soon it became two teams in the mix. It was interesting there, that there would look like a conversation between the two, but they knew they were, they were the uh, dominant team here because the pressure was being felt by specialized who were keen to get in there because they knew they'd be under pressure. So here is Sofia Gomez Viafan doing uh, the work on the front. But uh, as I said, uh, it was uh, Samara Shepard who was the one who was suffering in that combination. And uh, whilst she was on the front, Sofia Samara was at the back of this group. And uh, that wouldn't last too long because eventually she would have to roll back and uh, in her company. For the time being, this was in the early climb of the first one up towards the Clip Rafi, a bit towards uh, Janza Boss. It was Gomez uh, Viafan. But then it was just uh, four teams, uh, uh, four riders at least. Eventually, whoa, that was very close. Well, a little uh, bocky running out in front of the riders. That could have been a disaster. It, uh, they managed to avoid that and it uh, came down to these uh, four riders, two teams to sprint it out at the finish. And Mona Mittenwala, the world champion's jersey, alongside Anne Terpstra and Candice Lil Mittenwala's partner, alongside Nicole Kohler. We saw earlier Samara Shepard struggling, and even before, just a little bit before that, we saw Mona Mittenwala very much at the back of, uh, of the field or the, or the uh, small group, still able to hold her own. She is, of course, the most, one of the most pedigreed riders out there today, having the the most she's the rider who's won the most recent most recently has won a world cup and of course with those world championship bands in the marathon discipline she, she knows exactly what she needs to do 
And when it came to the sprint, it was the dominant pairing of the Ghost Factory Racing Team and the Terpster and Nicole Collar just edging out. Uh, all they had to do was edge out, a, a, you could say, a slightly struggling the Mona Metaval that, and that was the job at hand. And uh, following in around about five minutes behind the leading teams were the team of Toyota 91 Specialized. Top three home, uh, and uh, Sofia Gomez, Viafan, and uh, Samara Shepard completing the uh, top three. And that was a little reflection on the women's race today on stage one, and this is how it all uh, unfolds on the uh, leaderboard. And Terpstra and Nicole Kohler, uh, second ahead of Mona Mitevala and uh, Candice Lil. But now five minutes, the gap to Sofia Gomez, uh, Viafan, and Samara Shepard of Toyota Specialized 91. So they have lost nearly four minutes uh, today. Vera Loss and Alexis Scada also damaged today. They have lost another four minutes, seven minutes and five down. Lena Giraud and uh, Hayley Preen retain their position inside the top five. Another solid day from the E-Ford private client uh, holdings team. So, well, Vera Lawza and um, Alexis Scada really good. Within two minutes of uh, the third space, two minutes of the of the potential podium, it did ship quite a lot of time yesterday in the prologue. But uh, that could be um, that four-minute deficit is not a huge amount of time to make up if they want a spot on the podium. And that battle is going to be intense. Uh, Preen and Giro, 17 minutes down in the top five. In the men's race, this is the result of the stage that Becking and Lepa Aleman taking the win in that sprint over Schurter and uh, Fini with Beers and Grotz losing time but managing their efforts today. 21 seconds they lost to Rappenstein and Poro won't be too dissatisfied with 42 seconds but Gail Gega and Lucas Baum four minutes have lost today and new leaders in the ABSA African jersey Honeycomb Pro Cycling Mark Pritzel and Tristan Lokier a phenomenal race today sixth place for that pair and they are now the new leaders in five minutes uh, they were behind the stage winners today this is how it looks on general classification Nino Schurter and Sebastian Finney by a minute and ten seconds over Matt Beers and Howard Grotz Becking and Bart Alleman a minute and thirty down Villia Victoria Factory in fourth place. Eger and Baum, six minutes, nearly seven minutes off the leaders. And Pritzen and Nokia, the first African team in sixth place, eight minutes and two seconds down. Well, it's been another fantastic day's uh, racing here. Stage one under the belt for the elites. Hundreds still out there. They've got a long day. We've got stage two to come. And stage two is going to be a huge challenge as well. Where that starts with a big climb out uh, over the Witzenberg wagon trail and then into the Witzenberg Valley, which is one of the most remote farming valleys in this region with just one road in and out on the other side of the series side of the, uh, the uh, valley. But uh, they'll go up the wagon trail from uh, 200 meters to 1,000 meters above sea level. So it's a massive climb for them. And then uh, undulations all the way through the valley around the farmlands before coming back, uh, climbing up to the edge of the uh, mountain and then dropping down into the valley again through the Toyota Tough section, which will be the uh, bottom section of the Toyota of the uh, wagon trails. So uh, it's going to be a very, very tough day indeed for uh, all these riders, but uh, one that could, uh, well, they've gotten up and down at the, uh, the, the same mountain. That first climb coming in so early, uh, eight, nine k's in, um, uh, warm-up is important for that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, it's, it's you, you really need to be also in a way, if possible, in the lead to, to go up that climb. But you have like just you can ride your pace and you also like you because it, it is a technical climb and you that you but if a rider in front of you have to get off the bike or doesn't clear something, then it's uh, yeah when you when you're stuck behind. So it would be good to be uh, the first team which goes up that trail. Well, the Absa Cape Epic is an amazing logistical project in the village, beautifully laid out here at uh, Saronsburg. Weeks in advance, so the teams are out there putting it all uh, in place, and uh, it uh, does look a picture.
Well, uh, teams coming in in fits and starts here at the finish of stage one in Saronsburg, just outside uh, Tilbach, as uh, stage one is still underway here. Yes, the elite men and women teams, some of them are in, but not all, that is for sure, because uh, today's stage will take uh, anything between uh, seven and eight hours for the back end of the field. And uh, they will be out there toiling away up those climbs and down the descents and battling with uh, fatigue and uh, the heat and all other factors that uh, play a role in making this such an enormous challenge. Well, if it's a challenge that uh, you fancy ta having a go at, well, why not? You can enter the lottery, which is now open for the 2025 APSA Cape Epic enter the untamed it is uh, a prized uh, thing the an entry to the uh, apps cape epic so if you get in early here you have guaranteed an entry for next year and you've got an entire year to uh, prepare mentally and physically for the challenges that this event presents and it does present significant challenges all the way around well it all starts with inspiration and these pictures certainly from the trails we've been seeing are truly inspiring and a year would be a good a year's a good time to prepare Certainly long enough, many of the riders, even the top riders and experienced riders take up to six months to prepare. So, and uh, those entries sought after, and in fact, historically, they have been, uh, it's, it's well known that they have often sold out in seconds. So lottery gives you a chance to a chance at a, at a lottery of, uh, of gaining an entry. And there was uh, often that there actually there was like, if you see the stages or the years, there was always a bit of um, a swap between between more the coastal one where the sort was all like Hermanus and Oak Valley was included and the more inland here with uh, Tobach where it was always very hot in Wellington so it's always like one year here more coastal the other one more inland and the interesting thing is that a lot of the people a lot of the entries are taken up well before the knowledge of the route for the next year such as the cachet such as the profile such as the uh, the uh, you want to ride the Abscape Epic. Here we have a look at tomorrow. So this is in a, a little more detail what uh, tomorrow is about. We are down there where the arrow is and they will head up the uh, Witzenberg mountain range. It runs like a spine along the uh, eastern uh, part of this valley and uh, they drop into the Witzenberg valley. They'll head in the southerly direction, up screen if you like, and around the valley. Yeah, and also when the, the ride is dropping into Witzenburg Valley, it's also very, very steep and also l loose, rocky stuff. So I also remember from 2016, there also um, it was quite easy in a way also in the corners to overshoot because and, and the, the, the rocks were just they just rolled under you away and they, they, they carried you actually on the rocks. And that's the thing to bear in mind if you're a rider. It's important to ride just a little bit under your limit. If you, if, even if you're at the top end of the field, you want to ride within your limits because the uh, trail is very loose and very rocky. And uh, there's some sharp rocks out there. And uh, a small mistake might slash a tire and that could cost, uh, could cost many of the top contenders the race and uh, put a finish, a, actually an absolutely big finish at, in jeopardy if you have a mechanical that uh, that is as disastrous as a, as a as a broken wheel or something like that so it's uh, it's advised by the by the course designer to take it conservatively on all of these t uh, tricky sections these tricky downhill sections and the uh, the bit in between the, it's uh, two peaks on either side and a drop off on either side and if you look at the profile, that looks a bit like Taylor Mountain, that profile. Haven't also been the Hanekom uh, brothers yes. included? I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> Saki and Hannes Hanekom are the men who uh, put this stage together, really, Planet. So, and they've done 10 as a partnership. Uh, Saki is uh, riding, I think Hannes is riding this year. So there we go. The uh, podium for the elite Aramex women's uh, category. And again, champions all round, isn't it uh, grand to see? The world champions and national champions and continental champions. In third place, the uh, pair of Toyota Specialized 91, Samara Shepard, the Oceana champion in the Oceana champions jersey, and Sofia Gomez Villafan.
Canada Factory Racing, Mona Mitevala and uh, Candice Lil, the South African champion. Gold and silver at the Marathon Championships last year on the second step of the podium after a very strong day. They were right with the uh, race leaders throughout the day and finished just off their wheels. But it was another superb stage win for Nicole Kohler on the left and Anne Terpster on the right there of Ghost Factory Racing, Switzerland and the Netherlands. And, uh, well, six nations represented in a truly international podium here. On stage one of the Apps uh, Cape Epic. Also notable on that podium, we see Samara Shepard. She was sixth at the World Marathon Championships. Uh, behind uh, first place Mitavalna and second place Candice Lowell. And just ahead of Vera Lossa, who was uh, the Namibian in seventh. And Vera riding this year with uh, Alexis Scada, won last year's Zapsa Cape Epic with Kim Lacourt, and then went on to win the uh, Swiss Epic as well and uh, finished in the top ten of the Marathon World Championships. A really, really uh, top class year. Also did some gravel racing. So. Uh, podium and then uh, we'll just get the jersey uh, the beautiful Chivita leaders jersey presented to this pair the overall leaders Kola and uh, Terpstra back up on the stage and on the podium once again so the RMX uh, women's category overall leaders once again uh, in the uh, orange jerseys. They know nothing else uh, thus far in their journey around the Absa Cape Epic. A maiden uh, race it is for the pair, and they are proving to be a superb combination. Adding to their collection of uh, mascots. Spectacular jerseys they are too, and they'll be resplendent in them tomorrow for stage number two, day three of the uh, 20th Absa Cape Epic here in uh, Saronsburg. Well, it's been another dramatic day's racing for everyone, and uh, it'll be a long, hard day for those uh, further back in the field who are toiling their way back to uh, Saronsburg here. It's uh, another beautiful image of the 20th edition of the Absa Cape Epic as we visit Tilbach for the fifth time. We'll be back here tomorrow, a start and finish at Saronsburg as we spend two days in this beautiful uh, valley and uh, it's going to be another challenging day. Thanks very much to Sabine Spitz for joining me, Neil Gardner and out uh, on the uh, finish line there, Bart Brenchens doing the uh, talking to the the uh, riders as they finish and ahead of the start and to the entire crew out there bringing you those images it's tough but they've done a fantastic job thanks all we'll join you tomorrow similar time uh, see you then